can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 1421, John Yee's rotten idea. In the afternoon, John Yee returned to the studio. Everyone was working and was rather surprised to see him. Director John? What are you doing here? Didn't you say that you were taking two days off? Yeah, it's only been half a day. Ah, did something happen again? Is someone trying to challenge you again? If it were any other celebrity studio, how could there always be so many things happening on a daily basis? Besides, no one could bear that much of it either. If something big happened once every six months, that would be more than enough trouble for them to handle. But it was different at Zhong Yi's studio. Here, if there wasn't a major incident or two per week, they wouldn't be known as Zhong Yi's studio anymore. This was the epicenter of the Asian entertainment industry's problems. Zhong Yi smiled. Nothing bad happened. Only then did everyone heave a sigh of relief. You gave us such a fright. Zhong Yi immediately said, Come, let's have a meeting. In the conference room. Everyone took their seats. Zhong Yi asked, Olds were, how are recent developments? Zhong Zhuo smiled and said, Although Japan and Korea have introduced the restrictions, we're actually still doing great. Our popularity in Asia rose again yesterday. Ha Chichi laughed and said, The more we get scolded, the more popular we become. Little Wang flattered, Director Zhong is mighty. Director Zhong is powerful. Zhong Yi said in amusement, Enough, enough, it doesn't sound like a good thing no matter how I hear it. Zhong Zhuo said, If this continues, even if Japan and Korea maintain their restrictions on us, we'll still be able to hold our ground in the Asian celebrity rankings. We might even be able to keep moving up bit by bit. But if we want to reach the summit of Asia, that could prove to be very difficult, and it also would take a long time to achieve. Zhong Yi acknowledged, that's why this is still not enough. We mustn't be satisfied with the status quo. Ha Chichi looked at him. What do you mean? Zhong Yi said, since things have come to this, there's no way we can resolve it. So let's just take it all the way with them. But we can't keep on fighting like this. It doesn't mean anything and doesn't answer the problem. Yes, it does increase our popularity. But if we want to reach the summit in Asia, this bit of increase is too negligible. We need a greater spurt of popularity increase by doing something impactful, so I think there's a need to change our strategy. We can't wait for them to come over. We have to take the initiative and take it to them. Can't be passive or wait to get attacked. This thinking made sense, but, Wu Yi said startled, we're going to attack first. Tong Fu also said, but how do we fight? Zhongs were said, aren't the restrictions already in place over there? Zhong Yi smiled and said, then let's circumvent the restrictions. They explicitly restricted me by name, but what if I changed my name? Who would know that it is me? Nobody understood what he meant. Change names? How are you going to change it? Use a pseudonym? Ha Chichi said, then where are we going to take the fight to? Zhong Yi laughed. We have two choices. One is Japan and the other is Korea. Which country should we begin with? Everyone, give me your opinion. Wu Yi said, if you really want to do it, then I guess we should target Korea. Tong Fu nodded. We're more familiar with them since we've been fighting with them for so long. Zhongs were added, yeah, we're more familiar with Korea. Then Zhong Yi said, all right then, I've decided. Let's target Japan first. Everyone was floored. Foot. Then why did you ask us? Aren't our opinions redundant? Ha Chichi asked, th then how are we going to do it? Previously, Zhong Yi wasn't sure of how to proceed either. However, the lottery draw that he played at noon had given him a completely new train of thought. It had broadened his horizons and opened his eyes. Since he had always been taking the unconventional path, then he might as well continue taking it. The paths of other celebrities didn't fit him, so he would just have to find his own way forward. Japanese language? Drawing? The answer was obvious. Zhong Yi smiled mysteriously. If we're going to do it, we have to go big. We're not gonna sweat the small stuff since that won't help us get much popularity anyway. Think about it. What is the most popular in Japan, 
captures the most attention from people, has a lead on any other country by far, has their products sold throughout Asia, and is the most watched industry of all? Zhang Zhuo was startled. Are you saying? Zhang Yi grinned and said, yes. Ha Chichi was gobsmacked. Are you intending to? Zhang Yi nodded with a smile. That's right. Little Wang said in shock, are you going to star in an adult video? Flop. Zhang Yi nearly fell off his chair. He roared, me? Star in an adult video? Your sister. Little Wang said, didn't you say that it's an industry that catches the most attention from people? Zhang Yi nearly fainted from anger. Is that the only one you can think of? I'm telling you. You had better watch less of those videos from now on. Little Wang looked really embarrassed. Her face had turned all red. I've never watched it before. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Everyone in the meeting was laughing hard. Little Wang said anxiously, then what are you talking about? Ha Chichi clutched her stomach and laughed. Director Zhang was talking about Comics 1, right? Zhang Yi banged the table and said, look at old Ha. Just look at her. It's comics. Comics, my dear comrades. I want to use this as an entry point for all Japanese people to learn about me. I want to turn everything upside down. It's decided. We'll go ahead with the comics. Starting from today, we'll be doing this. Zhongzhu said nervously, you aren't joking, right? Zhang Yi smiled and said, do I look like I'm joking? Little Wang said, but you don't even know how to speak Japanese. Zhang Yi opened his mouth and spoke what sounded like gibberish to the team. Little Ju was startled. Is that Japanese? Tong Fu cussed, damn, when did you learn it? Zhang Yi smiled. I just picked it up. I'm good at studying, and the Japanese language is considerably simpler among languages. It's not too hard to pick up. Not too hard to pick up? But you still couldn't have picked it up that fast. Everyone was skeptical. Little Wang wiped at her sweat. But I've never seen you draw before. Zhang Yi said, there are many things that you don't know about me. Anyway, the direction is set. Within the year, we will definitely achieve the status of becoming an Asian S lister. I know that we've never done anything related to the field of comics before, but it doesn't matter. After all, practice makes perfect. Everyone, I need you to make use of your channels to get in touch with your contacts and prepare for the big plan after this. By the way, keep it a secret and don't let anyone know about it. When we contact the Japanese publishing studios, we must also ensure that our identity does not get revealed. Otherwise, there will be nothing left to play for. He kept going on for a while. Only then did everyone gasp to themselves. Is he serious? Is he really serious? But does director Jong know how to draw comics? Isn't this field mainly dominated by the Japanese? However, seeing how confident Jong Yi looked, no one said anything else about it. If he could actually rely on comics to break into the Japanese market and gain the popularity from their entire population, that would really be another way of doing things. When that happened, their popularity would definitely increase by leaps and bounds. All right then, let's take a shot at it. However, Zhang Yi's next line left everyone on the verge of collapse. Zhang Yi was about to leave the meeting room when he suddenly turned around. A. Hey, what kinds of tools do we need to make comics? Ah. Uh, you mean you don't know? Dear God. Chapter 1422, the first comic series is decided. At the studio. Some people went to get in touch with their contacts in Japan. Meanwhile, the remaining people were giving advice and suggestions to Zhang Yi. They were discussing the necessary tools required for making comics. As the saying goes, two heads are better than one, so they held a brainstorming session together. Hachichi said, they use fountain pens, right? Someone said, I think it should be drawn with pencils. Zhang Yi shook his head. It cannot be pencils. Little Ju suddenly said, I know, I've heard someone say that they draw with dip pens one. That's what they use specifically in Japan to draw comics. I think there are even many types that I use too. Zhang Yi's eyes lit up. Yes, yes, there's such a thing. There's such a thing. I've heard of it before. 
Good one, little Jew. Dip pens. Quickly, make a note to procure them. Little Wang was sitting next to him and taking minutes in all seriousness. Zhongs was said, we need A4 paper too. Zhong Yi smacked his thigh and said, that's right, that's needed as well. Wu Yi said, a ruler, don't forget a ruler. Right, a ruler. Zhong Yi nodded. Little Wang raised her head and asked, what if you make a mistake while drawing? What will you do about that? You surely need some white oak too. Zhong Yi pointed at her. Look at how meticulous Little Wang is. Right, we need white oak too. Little Wang was very happy to get praised. It's all because of Director Zhong's good leadership. A bunch of laymen were enthusiastically conversing and the list of items to be procured kept growing longer. At a desk in the corner of the studio, a rookie who had just joined the studio was dumbfounded. He looked at Zhong Yi, Ha Chichi, and the others in a daze as countless grass mud horses rampaged across his heart. Many of the words that were coming out from their mouths had seemingly brought him back to his childhood. Ruler? A four paper? An even white oat? The heck? What year are those antiques from? Why the hecking hell was white oat even mentioned? Why don't you use artist tape too instead if you make an error while drawing? Little son was hesitant to speak, but he slowly raised his hand. Director Zhong, about that. Everyone looked over at him. Ha Chichi asked, what's the matter, little son? Little son didn't know whether to laugh or cry. The way they draw comics in Japan these days don't require those tools anymore. They've long since switched to using computers and specialized professional drawing software. Zhong Yi said, huh? Ha Chichi said, huh? Zhongs was said, damn, is that so? Little son wiped off his sweat. What you all just mentioned were drawing tools from many years ago. They don't use them anymore these days. I have a relative who settled in Japan, so I'm pretty familiar with the scene over there. Besides, I occasionally draw comics as well, so I've come across these things too. There's really no need for something like white oat. The few upper management staff of the studio reddened in embarrassment. Zhong Yi immediately said, look at you guys, always blindly suggesting ideas like that. Little son is a professional at drawing, so we should listen to his professional opinion on this matter. Us? Blindly suggesting ideas? You were the one who agreed with everything we just said. Everyone rolled their eyes. Zhong Yi laughed and said, All right, little son, I'll let you handle this matter. Just let little Wang know what kind of equipment and software we need and she'll get it set up. Little son immediately received the order. I'll ensure that the task gets complete. On that same night, the equipment, tools, and even specialized tables and chairs were set up. Zhong Yi had requested two sets, one to be placed at home in the villa, and another to be placed in the studio. The computer was the latest touchscreen model from this world's leading tech company. He could operate and draw right on screen. It did not require any other external input. The software could be downloaded from the internet, and there were all kinds of them for him to choose from. There wasn't anything unusual about this anymore. Back at home. A call from Wu Zichin came in. You're home already? Ah, I had something to deal with. Do you want to go to my parents' place for dinner tonight? No, you guys can go ahead. Then I'll go back and prepare dinner for you. Aya, yeah, there's no need. I can just order takeout. What's going on at home? Oh, I'm setting up a drawing studio, so there's a lot of moving to get done. Isn't that small study of yours hardly used? I'll be converting it into a drawing studio, okay? Haha, <laughs> sure. All right then. This was the good thing about old Wu. She didn't mind whatever Zhong Yi wanted to do. Since old Wu was going to stay over at her parents' house tonight, Zhong Yi planned on drawing a little and making a decision on the series. As a result, he ordered some takeout and ate it for dinner. When the workers finished setting up the studio, he finished eating. After they left, he soaked in a hot bath for half an hour to sort out his thoughts before getting ready to start work. 8.30 a.m. In the drawing studio. Zhong Yi went over to sit on his new ergonomic chair and immediately got into the zone. 
he powered on his computer, then clicked on the professional drawing software, and began trying his hand at drawing. It wasn't supposed to be serious, but he ended up getting shocked. Fish? Birds? Houses? Cars? As long as it was something that he could imagine, he could replicate it in its most intact form. There was nothing stopping him, and the feeling was beyond amazing. Based on his form, he wouldn't have any trouble drawing any of the comics that he had read in his previous world. The only thing that he wasn't too familiar with was the software. So John Yi spent an hour exploring and familiarizing himself on how to operate it, such as filling in the colors, making alterations, or saving the files. An hour later, he was all set. He didn't have any problems with his drawing techniques either. All that was missing now was a series. John Yi opened up the Game Rings interface and immediately clicked into the merchant shop where he crazily bought a lot of memory search capsules. He ate them one by one and then closed his eyes. Immediately, he started recalling all of the comics that he had ever read in his previous world. He carved every single detail of every chapter from the different comics deep into his mind. In his previous world, John Yi was also a comics and animation fan. He watched cartoons when he was young but started reading comics as he grew older. Although he was not a fanatical comic fan and did not come across many of the other works, he still had the pleasure of reading some of the most famous Japanese comics. Which one should he choose? Which series should he use first? Zhong Yi pondered it and could not make a decision. That one? That one was quite good. How about this one? This one is not bad either. Which one should he use to fire the first shot? However, after much hesitation, Zhong Yi broke out into laughter. Damn, wouldn't any of them be the same? The comics that he had in mind did not exist in this world, so whichever one he brought out would impress no matter what. All right then, let's try it out with that one first. With a decision in mind, Zhong Yi immediately got down to drawing. One Piece Chapter 1, Romance Dawn Goldie, Roger, the King of the Pirates, had achieved it all. Wealth, fame, and power had all been his. His last words before he died inspired people all across the world to head for the seas, you want my treasure? It's yours if you can find it. I left everything in the world there. You just have to find it. The world is about to witness a great age of piracy. Swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. There was only the sound of the stylus brushing against the screen in the drawing studio. An hour. Three hours. Five hours. He spent the entire night drawing. From the unfamiliarity at the beginning, he slowly got the hang of it and got faster at drawing. Zhong Yi lost track of time as he became engrossed. When he got down to work, it was always like this. He did not care about eating, drinking, or sleeping. No one could stop him until he was satisfied or until he was unable to move. One chapter. Two chapters. When dawn broke, he managed to finish drawing two full chapters. After Zhong Yi filled in the background of the second chapter's last panel with black, he took a look at the hard work that he had put in all night. He was shocked with himself. Isn't this speed way too fast? He had finished drawing two chapters in just one night of work. He heard before that some of those cartoonists living the miserable life would either publish their work weekly or monthly. That would mean that the fastest they needed to submit their work was once per week, and it was only one chapter each time. And they would have to tire themselves out just to reach this target? But why do I not feel tired? This bro is not exhausted at all. Only then did Zhong Yi put down the stylus and head out in high spirits for breakfast. He wasn't tired at all. He did draw very quickly, but that's because his mind was already filled with the final product of other people's work. He didn't even a need to come up with a draft, or a plot, or character designs. All he had to do was draw them as he knew it. Coupled with all those fruits of agility and fruits of stamina, how the heck could he not be quick? Chapter 1423 the debut of One Piece. Later that morning. At the studio. Zhong Yi did not look tired at all after taking a two-hour nap at home. Instead, he seemed very fresh and even arrived at work humming a little ditty. Director Zhong. Morning. Good morning. Director Zhong, you're here? 
everyone greeted him with a smile. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Is everyone busy? Did you manage to link up with your contacts? Ha Chichi said, We're doing that right now. Thanks to little son's relative who settled down in Japan, a lot of matters became much easier and convenient to deal with. Little son scratched his head in embarrassment. It's what I should do. Zhong Yi patted him on the shoulder. Well done, little Sunday. When the time comes, we might have to ask your relative to help represent us regarding some things. After all, everyone, including the media, knows the identities of our studio's staff. If any of us were to reveal ourselves, we would get exposed. And besides, no one else here understands Japanese other than me. Little son immediately said, that won't be a problem. Zhong Yi smiled and said, all right then, I'll be troubling you. Little son quickly said, Director Zhong, you're welcome. Oh right, your drawing studio has been set up. Little Wang shouted from upstairs, Director Zhong, everything has been prepared. You can start drawing any time you wish. Zhong Yi said, start drawing what? I finished drawing two chapters already. Little Wang nearly tumbled downstairs. Everyone was dumbfounded. Ah? What? Finished drawing? Two chapters? What the heck? Do you have to be this quick? When it comes to work productivity, I really freaking have to give it to you. This difference between people was too great. Thinking about the other celebrities and their studios, they were all working in the same industry and would often interact with one another. In their private conversations, they discovered that everyone was always complaining about things like how this celebrity had quit on some project, that celebrity not wanting to take on certain work, some new song getting delayed by a month, or how there was conflict in a drama crew that made the celebrities refuse to rejoin the filming. A lot of people who worked at a studio would often have to painstakingly coax their celebrities on such matters. But at their studio? It was completely not the case. In fact, it was the exact opposite. Before the subordinates were even prepared or warmed up yet, they discovered that director Jong had already completed it. What kind of an experience was this? It was an unimaginable situation that no one would understand unless they had worked at Zhong Yi's studio before. Ha Chichi smiled wryly. You're too fast. Zhongs was said happily, Director Zhong has always been impatient like that. Zhong Yi laughed and said, of course. Come, come, I've already emailed the final copy to everyone. Everyone, have a look at it and give me your opinion. Instantly, everyone surrounded a computer to read it. Ah. It really is a comic. Looks like it's really what it is. Wow, it's in Japanese. Director Jong really knows Japanese. Everyone was exclaiming in amazement. Zhong Yi smiled as he saw everyone's reaction. He was feeling really satisfied with this. A few minutes later, everyone was done reading it. Zhong Yi said happily, so how is it? What do you guys think? Ha Chichi said, about that. Zhongs were also balked and did not dare speak. Zhong Yi smacked his lips and said, Don't worry, be brave and speak up. Tell me what you think. Ha Chichi was the first to speak. So then, I'm not very into comics and have not read that many of them before. But at first glance, it does feel a little offbeat. Pirates? Is that suitable as subject matter? Isn't that basically about robbing? If we're to gain popularity in Japan, surely we should be a little more mainstream, right? But I don't think I've ever heard of such alternative comics in the Japanese comic industry. Maybe you should, well, isn't this a little too niche? Zhong Yi smiled and said, Any other opinions? Little Wang coughed. About this character's design, why does he look a little? Zhong Yi asked, A little what? Little Wang said, A little ugly. Little Ju wiped away his sweat. It's indeed a little unacceptable. This character's design is too simple. Little Sun looked at director Jong's expression before saying, I've read a lot of comics. The characteristics and spirit of a character are reflected in their eyes. Be but for this character that you drew, why are his eyes only represented by dots? Isn't he this as good as having no eyes? Will that work? The background. The character design. The plot. 
everyone started complaining about it. Director Zhong, surely this won't work, right? Why don't we change it to something else? After Zhong Yi heard them out, he smiled and said, listening to your opinions, I'm rather relieved. All right then, we'll go ahead with this. I'll draw a few more chapters over the next few days and send them over to Japan. Everyone was speechless. They could not understand what Zhong Yi was talking about. Only he knew what was going on. Why was he relieved? Because in his previous world, that was also the assessment from everyone when One Piece first debuted. Weird. Ugly. Strange character designs. Good. Both of the worlds seem to have the same aesthetic appreciation of comics. Then all is well. One Piece is definitely going to be popular. Everyone was cautiously trying to persuade Zhong Yi, but they gave up after realizing there was no effect on him. Hachichi asked, then what pen name are you going to use? Zhong Yi was taken aback. Oh yes, what name should I use? Zhong Yi definitely could not use his own name, nor a name that was similar to any Chinese names. He couldn't let anyone guess his identity, so he had to think of a name that was obviously Japanese in order to blend in. What should he call himself? The first name that floated up in his mind belonged to a famous Japanese person, so he immediately blurted out, I shall call myself Sora. Sora? What kind of a name was that? The studio staff did not understand. Hachichi said, all right, then let's just call you, Sora. As they were speaking. Ring, ring, ring. A phone call came in. Zhong Yi answered it. It turned out that it was a call from someone at the Asian Charity Association. It was a Chinese person named Chu Hua Hua, and she was one of their managers. Teacher Zhong. Hey, Sister Chu, hello. We'll be holding a charity event in Japan next week, so we would like to invite you to join us. Do you have time to attend? In Japan? That's correct. What kind of an event is it? It's the Asian Public Service Announcements Award Ceremony. I'm included? Absolutely. Didn't they restrict me from entering the country? It's for our charity's award ceremony. They wouldn't dare stop you. Got it. All right then, I'll go. Okay, then can you please send me a photo of your passport? I'll help you make the arrangements. Sure. Thanks. After hanging up, Zhong Yi went to inform Ha Chichi and the others about it. Ha Chichi immediately made a note of it. Okay, I'll follow up on it. Little Wang blinked and said, Are you really going to Japan? Zhong Yi smiled and said, Why not? We intended to take the fight to them this time anyway, so we have to get a feel of the mood over there and check out the situation. He had just returned from Korea? And now he was headed to Japan? Everyone was trembling a little with fear. Director Zhong had always managed to get into conflicts with other people without having to step out of his house, to say nothing of if he did go out, and even more so if he did go abroad. When had he not caused earth-shattering chaos before? As a result, all of them shivered when they heard that Zhong Yi was heading abroad again. Chapter 1424, The Incident with the Japanese Hotels Magazines In the evening In his home drawing studio Zhong Yi buried himself in work and was drawing the third chapter of One Piece, looking focused. He wanted to complete at least ten chapters before heading to Japan. One page. Two pages. Three pages. The characters came to life on the canvas one by one. When he suddenly looked up, Zhong Yi realized another person was inside the small drawing studio. Zhong Yi put the stylus down. Whoa, when did you come in? Wu Ziqing, who was standing behind him, smiled and said, I've been here for a while now. Did you set up this new drawing studio because you wanted to make comics? Zhong Yi said, yeah. He turned back. Here, read it. Old Wu said with a smile, I read it already. It's pretty good. Zhong Yi said helplessly, you always say the same thing for everything I do. Old Wu said, haha, but it's really pretty good. Zhong Yi said, oh yes, I'll be going to Japan next week, to receive an award. Old Wu asked, all right, for how many days? Zhong Yi said, I'm thinking of staying a little longer to get a sense of the market there. Old Wu said, okay. 
but the people there aren't that welcoming of you, so just be careful, all right? Zhong Yi smiled. I will. I'm gonna continue drawing then. Old Wu said gently, I'll go make you a cup of coffee. Thanks, honey. Zhong Yi acknowledged before getting back to work. An hour. Three hours. The third chapter was finally completed. When he checked his watch, it was 12 a.m. Zhong Yi did not go to sleep and continued drawing the fourth chapter. If any Japanese cartoonists would have present, they would definitely have been shocked by Zhong Yi's speed. Zhong Yi did not even blink as he started drawing the moment he held the stylus. Swish, swish, swish. His hand seemed to produce after images at the speed he drew. He did not even stumble at any point in time while drawing the comics. There was no erasing, no alterations, and no errors. This had nothing to do with speed. Reaction, agility, strength, and stamina, all of it was indispensable. No one could draw as quickly as he did. Only a martial arts master who had knowledge of his previous world's completed comics, like Zhong Yi, could do it. One day. Two days. The final copy was building up page by page. Eventually, ten chapters of the final copy were completed. On the morning of the third day. Zhong Yi returned to the studio and showed everyone the final copy. The studio staff could no longer express how they felt at this moment. Ten chapters? You drew up eight chapters in the last two days? Jesus! You're too fast. Director Zhong, you must take care of your health. Yeah, don't tire yourself out. However, Zhong Yi said in a relaxed manner, what about me tiring out? What's the big deal with just this bit of workload? He wasn't bragging, he really didn't feel tired at all. When he left the house with Old Wu this morning, he even jogged three laps around their neighborhood before driving over to work without breaking a sweat. Everyone was speechless. They sometimes wondered if Director John was made of metal. They really wanted to take off his clothes to see if there were steel plates underneath. Hachichi said at this moment, Oh right, Director John, the itinerary for the Japan trip is out. Zhong Yi smiled and said, OK, let me have a look. Here. Ha Chichi passed it to him. It's from the Asian Charity Association. Schedule, next Monday. Plane arrives in Tokyo. Check into the Asakusa Hotel. And so on. Zhong Yi read over it. All right, we'll travel according to their itinerary. But for the return trip, there's no need to rush it. Let's stay for a few more days. Ha Chichi nodded. All right, I'll go and liaise with them. Jongs were asked, who will be in the entourage this time? Zhong Yi smiled and said, who wants to go? Little Wang raised her hand and shouted, me, me, me. Little Ju also raised her hand. I've never been to Japan before either. Ha Chichi laughed and said, it's not like we're letting you guys go there to have fun. We're going to be handling important matters. However, Zhong Yi was not that particular. Ha ha, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a work and r and trip. All right, little Wang and little Ju will be coming with me. And little Sun too, you'll definitely have to come along as well. Little Sun smiled. Okay. Zhong Yi looked at Ha Chichi. Old Ha, why don't you go too? Ha Chichi said, I will definitely be going. Zhong Yi nodded. So then, that's about it. Zhongs were felt a little uneasy and immediately said, Director Zhong, why don't you bring little Yang along as well? Ha Chichi quickly added, that's right, that's right. We weren't prepared when we went to Korea the last time, so we nearly got into trouble when we hit a snag. It won't work if we don't have a bodyguard with us while we're abroad. Moreover, the Japanese are always scolding you nowadays, so we definitely have to bring little Yang along with us. Safety first. Across the office, Yang Xu was leaning on the windowsill and staring at the BMW X5 parked downstairs. Upon hearing that, she slowly turned her head in a daze and asked, What's the matter? Where are we going? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. Ha Chichi said, We're going to Japan. We'll be depending on you for protection. Yang Xu nodded and said, All right. Zhong Yi lectured her, Don't cause any trouble when you're there. Yang Xu replied, OK. 
Zhong Yi said, and stop setting your sights on other people's car windows. Yang Xu said, uh huh. Zhong Yi harumphed, if you get into trouble while we're there, we'll leave you behind in Japan. Don't think about coming back here either. Do you hear me? Yang Xu said, okay. Nobody knew whether to laugh or cry. Director Zhong. How can you be so thick-skinned to lecture others? You're obviously the one who is always getting into trouble. Every one of those words that you said was referring to yourself, all right? The itinerary was finalized, and the entourage was determined as well. The remaining item to take care of was the paperwork. Getting passports. Booking the plane tickets. Making the hotel reservations. The Asian Charity Association had only invited Zhong Yi, but they did say that they would reimburse and make arrangements for his entourage as well. After all, they knew that for a celebrity of Zhong Yi's level, he could not possibly travel alone for a trip like that. However, since Zhong Yi was planning to bring a lot of people with him, he didn't want to trouble the charity to arrange all that. Zhong Yi was a fair and just person, so he decided that he would fork out the money himself. There were three more days to go. Everyone was looking forward to this trip to Japan. But just before they set off, an incident that would cause a heated discussion throughout Asia happened. On this morning, the news came completely out of the blue. A Korean journalist brought to light the in-house magazines in a hotel in Tokyo, Japan that were provided to their guests. The articles in it were extremely harsh, whitewashing history, tampering with history, denying past military atrocities, and even using language in an obviously insulting tone to the Chinese and Koreans. It was terrible and horrible. Most importantly, this hotel was even quite a famous one. It was called the Asakusa Hotel, and many of the accommodation needs of large conferences attendees and foreign athletes during important competitions were handled here. It was also a corporate partner to many travel agencies, and a lot of Chinese tour groups would arrange for their guests to stay with them. However, those magazines were all published in the Japanese language, so it managed to stay undiscovered until now. In the history of this world, there were also quite a lot of similarities to that of Zhong Yi's previous world. There were differences. But the general development of both universes did not vary by too much. As such, many of the countries in Asia were having none of it this time. China. Korea. The media. The people. All of them immediately started criticizing. Chapter 1425, I will stay at the Asakusa Hotel. The Chinese netizens. Damn, they're purposely trying to pick a fight. This is clearly a provocation. This hotel is too arrogant. The Asakusa Hotel? I stayed there when I took a vacation to Japan last year. Heck! What's the meaning of this? Apologize. They have to apologize. This is bullying. If it were some smaller hotel, it might not matter. But this is the Asakusa Hotel we're talking about. Heck, how can they do something like that? So many organizations and travel agencies work with them too. Oh, they're secretly placing some right-wing mags in the hotel while making money off of our Chinese citizens? Mother hecker. They must make an explanation for that. Right, this is too disgusting. The Korean netizens. Ask the hotel manager to step forward. Does anyone care about this? Actions like these are despicable. I can't believe it. There's actually a hotel like that. Apologize. Boycott staying in the hotel. I suggest that us Koreans should permanently cut all corporate ties with the Asakusa Hotel. Those magazines must be destroyed. This kind of talk cannot be forgiven by Providence. History is not something that you can erase just because you want to. Many of the Asian countries' peoples came forward to curse at this. They had long forgotten about the boycott of Zhong Yi. When it came to such major national issues, there was absolutely no room for negotiation. So everyone's attention was diverted to the Japanese in an instant. Similarly, a lot of Asian celebrities came forward to protest. Shumailan posted on Weibo, despicable. John Yuanchi posted on Weibo with a remark, let's see how long it'll take for your hotel to be done in. Jiang Hanwei Studios Weibo, respect should be mutual. Don't overstep your limits. Another heavenly king, to all the Chinese people, 
please remember the name of this hotel. Even if you're going to throw your money away, don't let them earn it. The people were firing shots. The celebrities were firing shots. The media was firing shots. This incident grew in intensity at once. At John Yi studio. Everyone here also saw the news. Harchichi was stunned. The Asakusa Hotel? Isn't that the hotel where director John will be staying? We cursed, those hecking Japanese. Heck their grandpas. John's were said, they're trying to cause trouble. Little Wang said, the main issue is, who knows how long those problematic magazines have been on display for. It was intentional. They're intentionally provoking us. Everyone was scolding. This was indeed a bit too much. If you weren't looking to earn the Chinese and Korean people's money in the first place, then fine. You could have shown that attitude right from the start. You didn't have to accept the Chinese tourists, or corporate bookings of the other countries' travel agencies and the accommodation of the foreign athletes. They wouldn't have wanted to stay at your hotel either. But no, the hotel actively sought out many corporate deals and managed to get a lot of Chinese and Korean tourists to stay at the hotel. Yet they still secretly placed all these problematic reading materials inside of everyone's rooms, deliberately mocking them for not understanding what was written in them. Moreover, the other Japanese guests and hotel employees who could understand Japanese would secretly laugh at them without bringing the matter to their attention. What was that supposed to mean? Are you taking us to be idiots? Everyone was furious, except for Zhong Yi, who remained rather stoic. This was because he found this news rather familiar. It had happened before in his previous world as well. The incident also happened in Japan, and it was also an issue with the in-house reading materials. The only difference was that the hotel was different. It seemed like some incidents were simply inevitable even after the world was now a different one. There would always be idiots with no idea of the stupid things they were doing. The situation kept getting worse. The voices of protest were getting louder and louder. Sports organizations, charities, travel agencies, and many other corporate partners of the Asakusa Hotel put forward their requests to have the hotel take away their problematic reading materials. The Chinese authorities also protested. The Japanese media was also highly concerned about this incident. But in an interview that was leaked out, a Japanese official gave a statement. Hello. Yes. Can we ask you what you think about the Asakusa Hotel incident? That is a matter for the hotel to handle. We have no authority to interfere. But many countries in Asia have raised serious protests. As I said, the hotel has its own way of managing its operations, so we won't be interfering. After a few hours, the Asakusa Hotel held a press conference. Many reporters from China, Korea, and Japan showed up at the venue. In the end, the hotel owner's first response was, we will not be taking away the reading materials in question. Those magazines will always be placed in every one of our hotel rooms. Arrogant. Too arrogant. The Chinese and Korean reporters were enraged. A female Korean reporter said loudly, aren't you afraid of losing the foreign tourists as your customers? But the hotel owner looked at her and said, our hotel will always welcome every guest. If you don't wish to stay here, don't come. We can't force you to stay here either. We have our own way of doing business, and as long as we keep our real customers happy, the hotel won't suffer any losses. On the contrary, we're doing great every year, and the hotel is even thinking of expanding its operations. This matter won't affect us at all. The Japanese authorities were indifferent. The Asakusa Hotel's attitude was terrible. This was the answer they had given. The Chinese and Koreans cursed like crazy, heck. What kind of people are those? Can't we curb them? Quickly take away the problematic magazines. Mother hecker. The matter blew up even more. Many Chinese and Korean travel agencies immediately announced the termination of all future cooperation with the Asakusa Hotel, and many travel service sites also announced that they would immediately blacklist the Asakusa Hotel from their search results and reservation services. One day. Two days. Furious scolding. Denouncements. Cancellations of cooperation. Wave after wave of attacks were aimed at them. 
but it was all in vain as the Asakusa Hotel stood firm no matter what the outside world did. They refused to take away the reading materials and continued behaving however they wanted. They even used this matter as a way to attract more right-wing Japanese guests to their hotel. No one could do anything about them. It seemed like the matter was going to carry on unanswered like this. At the studio, Zhong Yi still did not make any comments about the incident. The netizens were scolding and the celebrities were all calling for a boycott, but only Zhong Yi did not make a response. This left everyone in Zhong Yi's studio extremely surprised. Little Wang blinked. Director Zhong, let's express our stand as well. Ha Chichi also suggested, yeah, we have to at least scold them a little as well. However, Zhong Yi smiled and said, there are already so many people scolding them. I won't be missed. Little Wang was getting a little anxious. But that's not the same. We have to express our stand otherwise, how will people view us? Every time something like this happens, haven't we always been obliged to say something about it? Zhong Yi shrugged. What does it matter what others think of me? You've already seen the attitude of those people at the Asakusa Hotel. What's the use in scolding them further? They won't give a damn. Ha Chichi said, but. What was going on with director Zhong? Why was he so low-key this time? They could not understand. At this moment, the Asian Charity Association called because tomorrow was the day of departure to Japan. The call connected. Chu Huahua said, Teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi said, Hello, Sister Chu. Chu Huahua said, Too many things have happened over the past few days, so we didn't have the time to contact you until now. We've already held many discussions with the Asakusa Hotel, but nothing conclusive came out of it. We've decided to terminate our corporate agreement with them, so we'll be switching you to another hotel. Why don't you see if there any other place that you'd like to stay at and we'll arrange it for you? However, John Yi's reply was shocking. John Yi laughed for a bit. I think that the Asakusa Hotel should be pretty good. Chu Huahua was stunned, ah? John Yi chuckled and said, just go ahead with them. There's no need to change the accommodation. Chu Huahua gasped, but no Chinese citizen dares stay at their hotel anymore. Don't you know about the incident with their problematic magazines? This, Zhong Yi said, no one dares to stay there anymore? Well, I do. Chu Huahua was speechless. As was the staff of Zhong Yi's studio. Zhong Yi said happily, Sister Chu, I have decided to stay there. Chu Huahua said in a speechless manner, since you say so, then all right. But have you thought it through? Zhong Yi, haha, I've thought it through. Don't dare to stay? Why would I not dare to stay there? You should instead be worried about whether they dare to let me stay there. Chapter 1426, Big News The next day. On the morning of departure. Wu Zuching was making breakfast while Zhong Yi's mother was helping him with his luggage. Are you bringing your toothbrush? They have one over there. I don't need to bring one. Bring a towel. The ones at the hotel are not clean. Aya, there's no need to. Why do you have to go there for so many days? Hi, I just want to go there and hang out. You must watch out when you get there. I know, mom. Don't you know how skilled I am at fighting? Who's talking about you? I was talking about watching out for other people's safety. Don't create any more trouble when you're over there. Otherwise, how are you going to come back if you get arrested by the police? I won't, don't worry. Like I could possibly not worry about that temper of yours. Just help me take care of old Wu over here. Need you ask? Just go on your trip. The luggage was packed. After breakfast. Zhong Yi pulled the suitcase behind him and left the house. At the entrance, Yang Xu had already driven Ha Chichi, Little Wang, and the others over and were waiting outside. Little Sun quickly got out of the car to help him load the luggage into the car. Zhong Yi pulled open the door and got inside. The car drove away. Ha Chichi said with a wry smile, You didn't tell your family where you would be staying, right? Zhong Yi shrugged. I didn't mention it. Little Wang said, Why do you insist on staying at the Asakusa Hotel? Little Ju said, yeah, that place is on everyone's tongue right now, and everyone is avoiding it. 
Zhong Yi laughed. That hotel feels pretty good to me. Little Wang, Pfut. And where did you get the idea that it's pretty good from? However, Zhong Yi did not explain anything to them. They drove to the airport, got out, checked in, went through security, and boarded the plane. On the plane, everyone started to discuss the comic series. How to submit the final copy. How to go about the workflow. How to keep their identity secret. After all, that was the real purpose of their trip. The plane landed. At the airport in Tokyo. Little Wang and Little Ju were both traveling out of the country for the first time. They looked around curiously inside the airport. Suddenly, Little Wang pointed. They're here to pick us up, right? Everyone looked over. Indeed, there was a welcome sign with their names on it. Someone from the Asian Charity Association had come to pick Zhong Yi and his team up from the airport, and that person happened to be Chu Hua Hua whom Zhong Yi had met once. Chu Hua Hua was a woman in her thirties. She was slightly plump and looked extremely friendly. If you said she wasn't involved in charity work, people would actually find it hard to believe that. Chu Hua Hua stretched out her hand. Teacher Zhong, how have you been? Zhong Yi shook hands with her. Sister Chu, you needn't have come personally. Chu Hua Hua smiled and said, a lot of people have found out about your schedule. I came here personally because I was worried. Ha Chichi was taken aback, as though she did not understand why being worried had anything to do with Zhong Yi's schedule getting found out by other people. However, the next moment, all of them understood. Not far away. Several dozen Japanese people suddenly started shouting. Zhong Yi! Over there! It's him! That hooligan! Get out of Japan! Get out of Japan! We don't welcome you here! Pitui, whoever said that you could come here. Heck off back to China. The group was making a scene. Some people even held up signs in Chinese with swear words on them. With the uproar over here, quite a few passengers turned to look. Is that really Zhong Yi? So that's him? Damn, he still dares to come here? That bastard. In the end, a lot of Japanese passengers who were not here for Zhong Yi followed suit and started scolding him. Unlike the other countries in Asia, the Japanese people did not really care about the Asakusa Hotel incident. Many of them did not even know about it as the matter did not cause much of a sensation here. Their sentiments were still focused on the boycott of Zhong Yi. Be it the video of Zhong Yi's scolding incident at Peking University, the Rivers Run Red scolding incident, or the matter of Kimura Kozuyo getting sent back to Japan from China, everyone had accumulated a belly full of anger. In the past month, which day did they not spend cursing at Zhong Yi? Yet this fellow's Asian popularity score continued rising by the day, nearly driving them to their graves. Now that Zhong Yi had come to Japan, many of the Japanese people came over and started cursing at him. Ha Chichi and the others stayed very vigilant. Little Wang and Little Ju also stood closer to Yang Shu, feeling a little safer that way. Chu Hua Hua said helplessly, There, your popularity over here is rather high. Zhong Yi laughed as he calmly said, there aren't even this many people welcoming me back in China. I hadn't expected such a reception here in Japan. When the charity association staff who came to welcome them heard this, they gave Zhong Yi another look. So this was their newly appointed philanthropic ambassador? Most of them were only seeing Zhong Yi in person for the first time. What a legend indeed. This teacher Zhong is really big-hearted. In the face of all this scolding by everyone, he could still banter? Chu Hua Hua said, shall we go then? Zhong Yi said, sure. The airport also deployed the police to escort them out. It wasn't because the Japanese police were willing to do so, but that they had their duties to perform. In the car. Chu Hua Hua said, it's still not too late to change hotels. Zhong Yi smiled and said, there's no need for that. Chu Hua Hua spread her hands. All right then, I really don't understand what you're thinking, though. Along the way, everyone was treated to a simple taste of the Japanese scenery. When the car reached the hotel, it was already afternoon. After they came to a stop, Chu Hua Hua said, All right, I'll be dropping you all off here and leaving the rest to Little Yang to help you check in. 
But Zhong Yi said, there's no need. I can handle it myself. Chu Hua Hua gave it some thought. Okay, but there are a lot of reporters around, and the controversy is not minor. Do be careful and immediately notify me by phone if anything happens. Zhong Yi smiled. Great job, Sister Chu. Chu Hua Hua said, no worries. Zhong Yi and the others got out and watched as their ride drove off. Ha Chichi looked across the road at the Asakusa Hotel. So that's the place? Little Wang snorted. It looks like a rather big hotel. Little Sun said, Director Zhong, so do we? Zhong Yi smiled and said, you guys go ahead and check in. Little Ju said, don't. Let us accompany you. Zhong Yi said, there's no need for that. I intend to rest up for the next few days at the hotel. Do whatever you guys need to. Don't worry about me. There's no need to come over to look for me either. We can keep in contact via cell. Ha Chichi said, ah? Zhong Yi said, that will be all. Little Wang said, but, little Yang, take care of everyone's safety, said Zhong Yi. Yang Shu nodded. Don't worry, senior bro. After that, Zhong Yi pulled his suitcase along and crossed the road. Little Ju said in a terrified manner, will director Zhong be able to handle it by himself? Ha Chichi gave a bitter laugh and said, whatever, let's not worry about that. I'm sure he has a plan. They did not book their accommodations at the Asakusa Hotel and were instead staying at a hotel opposite it. As it was just across the road, they just needed to turn around and enter the hotel to process their check-ins. As for what Zhong Yi was really up to, they did not know nor could they guess. The Asakusa Hotel. In the main lobby. Zhong Yi slowly strolled inside and discovered that there was a rather long line at the counter. It seemed like business was rather brisk here and was completely unaffected by the scolding from the Chinese. He went over and joined a line. Two or three minutes later, it was finally his turn and he placed his documentation and passport onto the front desk. The female receptionist greeted him with a smile. Hello. Um. Are you checking into your room? MHM. Please wait. When the female receptionist finished speaking, she gave him a few more looks as she found him rather familiar looking. However, she did not think too much about it. But when she flipped open Zhong Yi's passport, she got a shock. What? Zhong Yi? That Chinese heavenly king? The female receptionist looked up and asked in English, Do you really want to check in? Zhong Yi said with a smile, Yes. The female receptionist was dumbfounded. Are you sure you didn't come to the wrong place? This is the Asakusa Hotel. John Yi said, I know. This is where I'm staying. The female receptionist checked the reservation list and received an even greater shock. John Yi's freaking name was really there. What is the meaning of this? Why are you staying at our hotel? Don't you watch the news? However, she did not stop and quickly processed John Yi's check-in. She also informed the president at the same time. Upstairs. In the office. The hotel owner received the news soon after. Zhong Yi checked into our hotel? Yes, president. Why is he here? It's a corporate booking from the charity association. Didn't they cancel it? They did, they cancelled all of them except for Zhong Yi's booking. He's the only one who's going to stay here? Yes. For how many days? The booking is for 10 days. Is he crazy or what? President, his reputation in Japan is very poor and everyone is cursing him these days. Should we reject his booking? Ha ha, just let him stay. I was just worrying about how to hype up the publicity further. After the incident blew up, he still chooses to stay at our Asakusa hotel? He must have so much trust in our hotel. This will show those people in China and Korea. Weren't they trying to boycott us? Weren't they going to cancel their bookings? Look. There will still be people coming here to stay. And it's even a big name in Asia. This is free publicity for us. That's right. Zhong Yi's stay was quickly processed. Unbeknownst to him, he had been recognized by quite a few foreign correspondents the moment he walked in. Ah. 
Isn't he that Zhong Yi? What's he doing here? Is it for the public service announcement award ceremony? But why is he staying here? Hurry, write a report on it. This is big news. Chapter 1427, Zhong Yi's two demands. In the hotel. Upstairs. The elevator came to a stop with a ding. There was the occasional chatter from the nearby Japanese guests. Did you read the magazines? I read them. Ha ha, the hotel president really dares to speak out. I like him. Me too, that's why I chose to stay at this place. Yeah, many others also think the same. To dare to say such things, I hope that the hotel president will continue to stand firm in his views. Yeah, many organizations and people in the country have sent in words of support too. The Asakusa Hotel is going to become so popular. In the past, Zhong Yi would definitely not understand any of these conversations. However, after eating the Japanese language skill experience books, he could even understand accented Japanese. He smiled as he dragged his luggage along and found his room. There, he unlocked the door. He swept his eyes over the place. This hotel's layout was similar to the average star hotels back at home. The decorations were more or less the same, except it was a little small. Although he had booked a larger suite, the space still felt rather cramped. He wasn't picky about it though. He closed the door behind him and placed his luggage aside. Then he started wandering through the suite. The bathroom. The living room. The bedroom. Finally, at a very conspicuous spot on the nightstand, John Yi saw a book. He bent over to pick it up and casually flipped through a few pages of it, this was it. The content was ugly. A bunch of nonsense. After Zhong Yi verified this, he went over to sort out his luggage. Towel, clothes, shoes, he took them out one at a time. Throughout it all, he was just like any other guest who checked into a hotel. In fact, he was even more normal than the average hotel guest. Across the sea. In China. At this moment, a great disturbance was stirring. A Sarkasa hotel president makes another snide comment. Many Japanese government officials express their support. The Japanese citizens send out thousands and thousands of support letters. The latest update, Zhong Yi checks into the Asakusa Hotel. Zhong Yi travels to Japan and stays at the problematic hotel. Reporters at the scene send in their reports, the person's identity has been verified as Zhong Yi. Why did Zhong Yi choose to stay there at this time? When the news came out, an uproar burst in China. Zhong Yi's cell phone immediately exploded with calls. His mother called. Mom, I've arrived. I've disembarked from the plane and checked into my hotel already. Ha ha, I forgot to inform you. Where are you staying? Why? Are you staying at the Asakusa Hotel? A, your news is quite up to date. Up to date my ass. It's all over the news in China. Really? Why are you staying there? I was reminding you a few hours ago not to get into any trouble, but look at you now. You immediately came up with this stunt the moment you arrived. Zhang Xia called. Grandma Zhang. What are you trying to do? Ha ha, nothing at all. If it's nothing, then why are you staying at the Asakusa Hotel? That place is the source of all current trouble. Aren't you trying to invite gossip by staying there right now? It'll be fine. Oh you, you're too bold. Ning Lan called. Old Ning, what's the matter? Quickly check out now. I only just checked in. Why would I check out? Didn't you see the news before you went over? I did. Then why do you still dare to stay there? Ha ha, why can't I stay here? Shu Mai Lan called. Jonga, what are you up to? I'm not up to anything. Everyone is calling for a boycott of the hotel, yet you still stayed there? Was it a booking by the charity association? Couldn't you have just cancelled it? And book another place yourself? That's too troublesome. You. The Koreans began scolding as well. Voices of denouncement resounded all over the internet against Zhong Yi. That idiot. Why did he still stay there? This is pissing me off. 
What is he trying to do? It's blown up over in China too. The celebrities there are all stepping forward to call for a boycott and expressing their stand, but he's the only one who didn't do so. And he even stayed there? Asterisk faints asterisk what a dip's hit. The Chinese netizens were also rather speechless. Teacher Zhong, your sister. What has gotten into Lord Zhong this time? Who knows? That fellow often relapses into fits like this every once in a while. I really have to take my hat off to Zhong Yi. How does he always manage to get into all this trouble? Can you not take your hat off to him? At a time like this, which Chinese celebrity wouldn't avoid that place like plague? But for him, not only does he not avoid the place, he's even stepping right through their doors? And took up occupancy as well? Zhong Yi has never done things according to common sense. But this is still too illogical. What is he trying to achieve by staying there? When it comes to causing trouble, if Zhong Yi claims that he is number two, no one would hecking dare to say that they're number one. He only just caused a ruckus over in Korea, but he's already making the news in Japan? He really can't settle down peacefully wherever he goes. This fellow is a born troublemaker. The entire world is in chaos all because of him. Teacher Zhong, please stop messing around. Teacher Zhong, your grandpa. Hurry up and check out of there. We can still get along after that. No one knew what Zhong Yi was trying to do. No one knew what he was playing at. Even Zhong Yi's relatives and friends were stunned when they heard about this. They all knew that this was not somebody else but Zhong Yi they were talking about. He was a nationalistic young man who often fought with others every other day and could start a mess from nothing. Further, it was such a big incident this time, yet? Zhong Yi didn't even say a single word or scold anyone on the internet, nor did he take to calling out the other party. In fact, he even went there to stay at the hotel. This was too abnormal. This was too illogical. Surely this fellow wasn't planning to kick up some earth-shattering trouble, was he? Tokyo. The Asakusa Hotel. In the cafeteria on the second floor. A lot of Japanese people were eating. The hotel's president dropped by at this moment, and a group of people were looking at him with smiles while making conversation with him. President, we support you. Well done. Right, you must stand firm on this. We'll be cheering you on. You're a national hero. They even went as far as calling him a national hero. There was even a spring in the president's footsteps. At this moment, a young man came strolling into the cafeteria. He found a spot and took a seat, then ordered and ate his meal. Everyone noticed him. Doesn't that guy look familiar? Could he be Zhong Yi? Damn, it's really him. What? He actually dares to stay here? What on earth is going on? Why is he here? They were all stunned. The president looked at Zhong Yi and was prepared to ignore him. He continued chatting with everyone else as he went from table to table. But when he passed Zhong Yi's table, a line in Japanese astonished him and stopped him in his tracks. Zhong Yi did not raise his head. There are two things. The president was so shocked his jaw dropped. You can speak Japanese? Zhong Yi took a bite of his food and chewed as he spoke, first, destroy all of the problematic reading material. The president's face sank. Zhong Yi took another bite. Second, make a public apology. The president looked at him with a dark expression. Only then did Zhong Yi look up with a smile. Simple, right? The president sneered and said, impossible. But Zhong Yi calmly said, consider it. I'll give you a day's time. If I don't see any response by the deadline, you'll be responsible for the consequences. Consequences? What consequences can there be? You're even giving me a day's time? Who do you think you are? The president was not having any of it. The Japanese celebrities only cared about Zhong Yi because they were artists too, because they were interested in developing their careers in the Chinese market. But their hotel had no plans to expand into China, so what was the use of threatening him? Do you think I'm afraid of you? Do you think you're someone important? And besides, shouldn't you know where you are right now? This is not China. This is not your territory. This is Japan. 
this is the Asakusa Hotel. The president stared daggers and said, well, I'll be waiting then. Johnny glanced at him. I personally suggest that you think about this carefully first. The president found it ridiculous. There's no need to. Zhong Yi smiled and went back to eating. All right then. Nobody heard the conversation between the two of them. Everyone else only saw the two of them talking about something. After the meal, Zhong Yi wiped his mouth and slipped out of the cafeteria. He took the elevator and returned upstairs. Why did he come to the Asakusa Hotel? Of course he wasn't here to travel. Not scolding anyone? Not saying a word? Not expressing his stand? That was because Zhong Yi did not have to do any of that. Because he had always been one to let his actions speak for themselves. Chapter 1428, Zhong Yi's Underhanded Tactics The next day. Morning. The charity association's car arrived at the hotel to pick him up. Zhong Yi packed his luggage and headed to the venue of the awards ceremony. It was an internal award ceremony, so there wasn't even anyone from the media present. After that, an appreciation event was held, followed by a luncheon. About two hours later, the events finished up. The business done, Zhong Yi returned to where he came from. In the afternoon. The Asakusa Hotel. Zhong Yi had just returned when Ha Chich's call arrived. Director Zhong. Yes? Is the event over? It's done. Did it go well? Ha ha, of course it went well. Did you see the news from back home? I've seen it. Everyone knows that you're staying at the Asakusa Hotel, so what do we do now? There's nothing we need to do about that. By the way, old Ha, have you completed the certification that I requested? It's already done. The certification has been passed. Okay. What are you using it for? Haha, <laughs> I have grand plans for it. After hanging up, Zhong Yi looked around the hotel room. When he walked back into the bedroom, the sheets were folded and that magazine had reappeared at its original position. They still did not remove it. Zhong Yi smiled and was not surprised. After a glance, he continued to the bathroom where he filled the bathtub up before taking off his clothes and getting in. He closed his eyes and luxuriously soaked in the warm bath while humming a little ditty. Meanwhile, upstairs in the hotel, several executives were holding a meeting. Did he really say that, President? This Chinese celebrity is too arrogant. Ha ha, how can we be afraid of him? I would like to see just what kinds of consequences he's talking about. A day's time is almost up? But he still hasn't acted. Ha <laughs> ha, what could he possibly do? Does he think that he can tear down our hotel? What is he bragging about? If he even dares to try, the police will take him away immediately. The Asian entertainment circles people are always saying this and that about him, about how amazing he is. It looks like they've deified him too much and made him sound more impressive than he really is. He's only an artist. And he's even in Japan, which is our territory, so how does he plan on taking us on? Isn't that just a fantasy? If this were China, he might be able to gather the people to surround our hotel or boycott us with just a shout. That I believe. I believe he does have that influence. I would apologize immediately if that were the case. But this is Japan. He can try all he wants to gather forces. I don't believe that anyone will respond to him. Ha ha. If even ten people respond to him, I'll be convinced. Not even ten, even five will impress me. Ha 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 ha, just three is enough for me. What three or five people are you two talking about? I'd consider him capable if even one person shows up. The hotel's top brass started laughing as they discussed the matter. But at this moment. In the room downstairs, Zhong Yi had finished bathing. He went over to the sofa to sit down and took out his laptop. Crossing his legs, he started doing something that was unimaginable to anyone else. He did not tear down the hotel, nor did he not haggle with the hotel staff. All he did was log on to a website with his verified account, and inject himself into Japan's own social network that wasn't unlike China's Weibo. A lot of celebrities and government officials would also post their updates on this platform. 
On it, a lot of Japanese people were still scolding him. This kind of denunciation had been going on for many days. I heard that he came to Japan. Yeah, he even won a prize. It makes me so angry. Who allowed a notorious artist like him to come to our shores? And he was even awarded a prize? Don't let me find out where he stays. Otherwise, I'll definitely avenge Kimura Kozuyo sensei. Right, we won't take it lying down. This man is as good as a tumor in the Asian entertainment industry. It's just too bad that we can't locate him. Otherwise, everyone could spit on him and drown him. Over here, Zhong Yi was basically the most wanted man alive. There was scolding all around as the Japanese people remained immersed in a wave of deep anger over Zhong Yi. His popularity over here was very high. Zhong Yi started typing. Yomashito Take now. An A-list celebrity in Japan. At this moment, he posted the promotional activities for a new movie he was starring in. The people were eagerly waiting and wishing for him to have a box office sellout for his new film. There was a very celebratory atmosphere around. Then, an extremely dissonant voice appeared. Zhong Yi commented, Are you insane? Sent from the Asakusa Hotel, Tokyo. What the hell? Who's he calling insane? Who is this person? Ah, Zhong Yi? Is that a fake account? Look at the verification. It's Zhong Yi himself. Heck, it really is him. Mother Hecker. What does he mean by that? Yomashito Take now was hopping mad. Koizumi Masumi. A Japanese S-list superstar. Her new song had just been released, and she was currently chatting happily with the netizens. That voice appeared again. Zhong Yi commented, Are you insane? Sent from the Asakusa Hotel, Tokyo. Holy shit. Zhong Yi. It's Zhong Yi. You're the insane one. Your whole family is insane. Heck, this fellow is too arrogant. Koizumi Masumi was also exasperated. Komatsu Ryu. A Japanese A-list star. The latest Japanese drama that he starred in had won a major domestic award. Komatsu Ryu had just posted a message of thanks online, but it was met with that voice yet again. Zhong Yi, are you insane? Sent from the Asakusa Hotel, Tokyo. Zhong Yi. It's him again. This is pissing me off. Arf. How can there be such a shameless person? Why is he taking the fight here? What is he trying to do? When Komatsu Ryu saw this, he nearly fainted from anger. B listers. A listers. S listers. More than 30 Japanese celebrities were greeted by this message of Zhong Yi's. Of these people, all were actively involved in the denouncement of Zhong Yi in recent days. They had their fair share of scolding him online and expressing their stance in public. But in the end, Zhong Yi came looking for them one by one. This stunned a lot of people who were watching. No one expected Zhong Yi to be so bold. This is Japan. You're in Japan now. But you came here looking for trouble with them? Do you have a hecking death wish? At this moment, the Japanese entertainment industry was enraged. At this moment, the Japanese media turned furious. At this moment, the Japanese people blew their tops. How infuriating. I can't take this anymore. Brothers, get him. Heck, kill him. Look. He didn't turn off his location reporting. That dumbass exposed his address. Where is he? He's in Tokyo. The Asakusa Hotel. Let's get him. We found him. He won't be able to get away this time. Everyone, let's go together. Make him get out of Japan. Let him have a taste of our anger. Who's coming? Count me in. And me too. Damn. I'm going as well. Everyone, calm down. He's the Asian philanthropic ambassador and is protected by the authorities as well as the charities. Hecking philanthropic ambassador, my ass. Have you seen anyone with an attitude like his become a philanthropic ambassador before? He's gone mad. Everyone, let's get him. Chapter 1429, 
the Asakusa Hotel gets besieged. Later that afternoon. Tokyo. Outside the Asakusa Hotel. A crowd started gathering in all directions. Some people were scolding angrily, some looked enraged, and some had sullen faces. There was a mix of men and women, young and old. We're here. It's the Asakusa Hotel. This is the place. Mother Hecker. John Yi is in there. Ten people. Fifty people. A one hundred people. More and more people were gathering. Within a short period of time, the crowd grew to over a one thousand people. The front, sides, and back entrances of the hotel had all been clogged up by angry crowds of people. Upstairs, in the president's office. Several of the hotel's top brass were talking and laughing. At this moment, the hotel's lobby manager ran in in a panic. This is bad. President. Something bad has happened. What's going on? What happened? The hotel has been surrounded by crowds of people. What? People from where? I, I don't know. How big is the crowd? Uncountable. Totally uncountable. How is that possible? Hurry, go out and look. The top brass were shocked and started panicking. They jumped to their feet and ran outside to see for themselves. But when they saw the surrounding area of their hotel jam-packed with people, they nearly pissed themselves. Why? What is this? Is John Yi the one behind all this? But it's impossible. This is Japan. Not China. How can that Zhong fella possibly have such a great influence? These executives were mocking Zhong Yi a while ago for being unable to gather anyone to the hotel. But when they saw this scene in front of them, when they saw the densely packed crowd of people, they were all dumbfounded. This was too hecking outrageous. The crowd's numbers were still increasing. The crowd was still growing larger. In the blink of an eye, another 100 odd people had joined in. Suddenly, someone shouted, Han Zhong Yi over. Han Zhong Yi over. Han Zhong Yi over. Countless people were shouting in unison. The leading voice roared, Get out of Japan. Get out of Japan. Get out of Japan. Get out of Japan. Get rid of the tumor. Get rid of the tumor. The roads had been blocked off. The passersby looked over in shock. The hotel president paled. He finally understood what was going on. When the hotel's top brass heard that, they also understood what was happening. They nearly jumped and started cursing at this. Many of the hotel staff got so scared that they did not dare show themselves. Shit. This is bad. Jong. You're too hecking evil. At the hotel across the road. Ha Chichi and the others were holding a meeting in the room. Everyone was discussing the comic series that Zhong Yi had delegated to them. As they were talking, thunderous shouts and screams came from outside. They jumped with fright and immediately felt that something big had happened. They ran over to the window in a panic and looked down. When they saw it, Ha Chichi and the others all gasped in shock. Little Wang shouted, Damn. Little Ju shouted, Damn. Little Sun shouted, Damn. Ha Chichi anxiously said, Are they shouting Zhong Yi's name? Little Sun, who understood a little Japanese, said, Yes. Ha Chichi said, This is bad. Something has happened. She quickly called Zhong Yi, who was staying at the hotel across the road. Do do do, it went through. Ha Chichi said, Director Zhong. Zhong Yi asked, Old Ha? What's the matter? What's going on over there? Nothing is happening? Ha Chichi nearly vomited blood. How can you call that, nothing is happening? Zhong Yi laughed and said, It's fine. Just carry on with whatever you all are doing. Didn't I already say not to look for me these few days? I have some matters to handle, so I'll go look for you all after I'm done over here. After hanging up, Ha Chichi and the rest were all shaking in fear. They only understood now what Director Zhong was planning. They only understood now why Director Zhong had insisted on staying at the Asakusa Hotel. Little Wang slapped her forehead and exclaimed, I knew it. I knew that Director Zhong would surely start something big the moment he came abroad. Look at that. 
Will you all just look at that? Little Sun was almost in tears. What are we going to do now? Little Sun had only joined Zhong Yi's studio for a short period of time, and this was his first time going out for work with Zhong Yi. Although he had heard many stories about Zhong Yi, now that he was experiencing it firsthand for the first time, he finally understood why his colleagues at the studio got so terrified the moment they heard that Zhong Yi was going abroad. He finally had a taste of this feeling and thought that it wasn't something that most people could bear. Their hearts wouldn't be able to take all of this stress. At the hotel. Zhong Yi's room. The shouting outside grew louder. However, Zhong Yi did not even have a frown on his face. Instead, he was relaxing on the sofa with his legs crossed and checking out the comics and animation of this world on his cell phone. One page. Five pages. Ten pages. This comic was pretty good. Zhong Yi was reading it with relish. Downstairs. The crowd was howling. Get out of Japan. Hand Zhong Yi over. Some people made a dash for the hotel. The Asakusa Hotel security team rushed to stop them, while the hotel staff were crying over the situation. They braced themselves into a human wall to keep the crowd at bay. Don't squeeze through. You're not allowed inside. Manager, quickly call the police. I've already done that. What do we do now? Block them. Stop them from entering. Go and close the back entrance. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The hotel was full of guests, so they couldn't possibly allow the protesters to get inside. If the guests complained, the hotel couldn't bear it. Moreover, these people were all so angered, so who knew what they might do if they got in? If they were to thrash the place, none of them could suffer the losses. A few minutes. In just a few short minutes. The Asakusa Hotel was plunged into chaos. The hotel president stepped forward to speak up. Everyone, please calm down. Listen to what I have to say. The crowd was enraged and wasn't going to listen to any explanations. Han Zhong Yi over. We know that he's inside. The hotel president said loudly, I don't know where you all got your information from, but we really don't know anything about Zhong Yi staying with us. We did not receive any news about it, so could everyone please go back? Hurry up and go back. Zhong Yi isn't at our hotel. You can all go elsewhere to look for him. The crowd shouted, impossible. The hotel president said, he's really not here. An executive of the hotel said, right, there's no such person staying here. For a moment, the crowd fell silent and hesitated a little. But right at this moment, a hotel window upstairs was pushed open from the inside. The figure of a young man appeared at the window with his elbows resting on the windowsill and a cell phone in his hand. He was reading comics on it with a smile while basking in the warmth of the sun. Someone looked up. Someone pointed upstairs. Quick, look up there. It's John Yi. Heck. It's him. He's really in there. There he is. The hotel is in cahoots with him. Damn. So they banded together to lie to us. With this, the people became even more enraged. The hotel president and staff also looked up at that window. They were so enraged they nearly burst into tears. They had never come across someone as despicable as this. This bastard was doing it on purpose. John Yi. Heck your grandpa. Are you hecking trying to do us in? Chapter 1430, Inviting the Devil in is easier than sending him away. The people downstairs were furiously cursing and scolding. It was chaos inside and outside of the hotel. The police hastily arrived at this moment. John Yi, scram back to China. The hotel has associated themselves with this scourge. Get back, all of you. We're the police. Who's causing trouble here? Arrest them. Who is the hotel manager? What is going on here? Me, I'm the manager. Get back, all of you. No loitering around here. With the three groups of people caught in the mix, it couldn't get messier than this. Meanwhile, Zhong Yi was standing absolutely still at the window. He had a smile on his face as he concentrated on his cell phone. 
It was as though he wasn't the target of scolding by the people downstairs and that the matter did not involve him at all. Further, he even began singing happily. You are the most beautiful cloud in my sky. Let me do what it takes to have you stay. Have. You. Stay. Below, when a Japanese police officer who understood Chinese heard that, his legs gave way and he nearly fell face first onto the floor. Have you stay? Have you stay, your sister? The police officer shouted to the rioting crowd, disperse immediately. Three groups of people. Three squads of officers. Everyone was gnashing their teeth in hatred. But Zhong Yi was happily humming a song upstairs. What kind of a scene was this? When Ha Chichi, little son, and the others saw this heroic air of director Zhong's through their window, they were greatly touched for a moment. Ha Chichi sighed. Little Wang gave a wry smile. Little Ju's eyes lit up in awe. Little son was stunned and suddenly overcome by a sense of fascination. This was Zhong Yi. This was their boss. In all of heaven and earth, there wasn't another like him. An hour later. The farce came to an end. The situation was barely brought under control after three squads of police officers got deployed to the scene. The complaints at the hotel blew up instantly as the front desk and lobby got swarmed by the hotel guests. I want to cancel my booking. Refund me my money. But you only just checked in. How can I still stay here? Sir, we are sorry. I was discussing a contract with my friends just now, but the shouting downstairs totally drowned out our voices. So tell me, how can I continue staying here? Cancel the booking. Ah, uh, I have to consult with my manager first. You can consult with whoever you want. I'm still going to cancel the booking. I want to cancel my booking too. Me too. What kind of a hotel is this? Is there a war going on? I was woken up by all that noise after managing to fall asleep. There's no way I can stay here anymore. I had a booking for three nights, but just cancel the remaining days of my stay. Right, refund our money. We don't care what kind of unexpected situation your hotel has encountered, but it cannot affect us. A fight nearly broke out today. When I was downstairs observing things earlier, I nearly tumbled over from the pushing. It's too dangerous, so it doesn't matter what you all try to say now. I just want a full refund. The hotel guests started kicking up a fuss. Many of the guests who were supposed to check in today also left when they saw the commotion outside the hotel's entrance. Meanwhile, more than half of the guests who were already staying at the hotel were now haggling for a refund. Before this, many of these people were shouting their support for the Asakusa Hotel's president, claiming he was a national hero and asking him to stand firm in his views. But when trouble started to affect them directly, none of them cared about what had been said. We just want a place to stay at. Surely you don't expect us to put our lives in danger, do you? The crowd of over a thousand people that had surrounded the hotel earlier had frightened them terribly. For a moment, a wave of unrest stirred again. The hotel was struggling to deal with all the requests as the hotel president and executives came forward personally to deal with the situation. They reassured the guests one by one and offered them their apologies. They brought along the service staff and went from room to room to apologize and promise that the room rates would be halved for the day. They even presented the guests with some small gifts and fruits, and in doing so, managed to convince some of them to continue staying with them. But even so, a third of the checked in guests still insisted on getting a full refund as they dared not stay here any longer. At around 2 pm, Peace finally returned to the hotel again. The hotel staff looked at one another with a sense of lingering fear, then at the mess of a place within the hotel. An exterior wall had been vandalized by the rioting crowd with some unknown substances on it that could not be washed off no matter what. The hotel had suffered a heavy loss. Looking at this sight, the hotel president's heart was dripping with blood. This was too painful even for him. All of this had hecking cost him so much money, yet even now, he was unsure of what had actually happened. Why had so many people come to the hotel? How did everyone know that Zhong Yi was staying with them? Why was everyone who came to make a scene so full of rage? They were all busy dealing with the mess earlier, so there wasn't any time to check the news. A female employee said, what the heck is this? 
the president said angrily, who can tell me what just happened? Someone said, it's John Yi. He launched a tirade at more than 20 of our top Japanese celebrities on the social network. What's more, he didn't hide his location, and it was shown on those posts that he was scolding them from our hotel. The president said startled, what? An executive was stunned. He scolded more than 20 celebrities? Another executive, heck. Is he not afraid of dying? An executive said, I knew it must have been him. That son of a bitch. A manager said, we got screwed over this time. An executive said, President, we cannot allow a person like him to continue staying here. He might not be afraid to die, but we cannot stand it any longer. Another executive yelled, he's a hecking madman. The hotel president said with a dark look, the charity association booked his room for 10 days? Cancel it. Cancel it immediately. A service employee responded, yes, I'll get it done right away. With the chaos that happened today, the president also became a little fearful. You're great. You're impressive. I will not let you stay here anymore, all right? Hurry up and get out of here immediately. However, the development of the situation was entirely different from what they had in mind. When the Osaka Hotel went to cancel the charity association's room booking, they alarmed an important person at the Asian Charity Association. It was Director Chen. The call was somehow routed to him. The hotel employee said dumbfoundedly, Ah, Director Chen. Director Chen said, Who's cancelling our booking? The employee hurriedly said, It's just that something has suddenly come up on our side, so, the money has already been paid, right? Ah, uh, it has been paid. And you all have accepted the booking, right? We did accept the booking, but, since the money was paid, the booking was accepted, and the guest is already checked in as well, then a contract has been established. How can you chase away the guest as you wish? Can you simply not accept the booking? You can just handle it any way you want. You can just back your way out of the contract. Do you all want to die? Do we want to die? That employee was dumbfounded. She could never have expected that such an important person from the Asian Charity Association would speak like that. What the hell? Is this how you people from charities act and speak? Director Chen said in anger, if teacher Zhong says that he doesn't want to stay at the hotel, then you all can process his checkout for him. But if he wishes to continue staying, then I'd like to see which one of you dare make him check out. It's a 10-day booking. Any day less, and I'll bring my people down personally to find you. Hear that? After he said that, the call ended with a loud click. The employee turned around to look at the president. Chapter 1431, the Asakusa Hotel gets besieged again. On the same night. China. The news had spread back to China. A lot of people found out about the news from the Japanese media, and many of them were stunned by it. They were so shocked that their jaws dropped to the floor. On the internet. Weibo. Moments. At this instant, the news blew up everywhere. What? Zhongyi launched a tirade at over 20 Japanese celebrities? His location was exposed? The Asakusa Hotel got besieged by the Japanese citizens? Over 30 police officers were dispatched to the scene? Holy shit! Our Jonger is so impressive. This, this, ha 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 ha, well played. Lord Jong is so awesome. My idol. How ruthless. Mother hecking hell. I knew it. I knew that a nationalistic young man and professional face slapper like Zhong Yi wouldn't possibly have checked into that Asakusa, hotel that's on everyone's tongue for no good reason. I should have thought of it. That fellow clearly went there to make trouble. Ha 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 ha. This is gonna be really interesting to watch. Everyone, forward this piece of news. There's something exciting to watch again. Lord Zhong has made his move. This really came without any warning at all. Face smacking Zhong did not even say a word prior to this, so this is such a great turnaround. When I read that he had checked into the Asakusa Hotel previously, I even criticized him for being unpatriotic. This is who Zhong Yi is. If he can prove something with his actions, there isn't a need to pay lip service at all. 
What's the situation like over there? I don't know. Let's wait for the news. Back at home. Zhong Yi's mother was floored. His father was speechless. When Wu Zeqing saw the news, she chuckled. At old Yao's house. Yao Jintai was dumbfounded. Yao Mi was at a loss for words. Yao Jintai's wife facepalmed and didn't know whether to laugh or cry. At Zhong Yi's studio. Zhong Zhuo was sweating profusely. Wu Yi hurriedly called Ha Chichi to find out about the situation. The other staff who had stayed behind in the office were also panicking. Some of them were used to this, while some of them were not used to it yet. Whenever Zhong Yi traveled for work, there would always be trouble. If he went on a short trip, there would be a minor incident. If it was a longer trip, there would be a major incident. The further he went, the more trouble there would be. This was the usual practice over here, and no exception had ever been made. There were truly no exceptions. The next day. Tokyo, Japan. An uneventful night passed. In the morning, Zhong Yi got up before 8 a.m. He stretched lazily and had a look at his watch before getting out from bed to wash his face. Then he headed down to the hotel's cafeteria for his free breakfast. Significantly fewer people were in the cafeteria now that many of them had checked out yesterday. Zhong Yi found a table with no one around and ate by himself. At this moment, the guests who were eating breakfast and the hotel staff also noticed him. Zhong Yi. That's him. The people who came and caused a commotion yesterday were all here for him. This fellow is so awful. Yeah, I've seen the things that he said on the social network as well. I've met people who are offensive, but I've never come across anyone as offensive as him. He has made enemies out of those 20 celebrities. This fellow is horrible. Why is he still staying here? Why hasn't the hotel chased him away yet? At this moment, the president arrived with his people. When he saw Zhong Yi, his expression changed as he shot a dark look at him. He didn't say anything, conversing with the other guests instead. President, what's going on? Why hasn't he left yet? How many more days will he be staying here? Cancel his booking. Right, he was the one who started that mess. Everyone was expressing their views. The president could only think to himself how he would have liked to chase him away as well, but the issue was that he couldn't do so. This fellow had really strong backing. However, he could not say that aloud. We always try our best to serve any guest who comes to stay at our hotel. That has always been the motto of our hotel. Not long after. The president led his people and left the cafeteria. As the president walked past Zhong Yi who was lowering his head to eat, Zhong Yi spoke again. About the two demands. Have you thought them over? The faces of the president and his followers sank. Zhong Yi said as he ate, if you haven't made a decision yet, think it over again. The president sneered and said, do you think that we're afraid of you just because of this little stunt that you pulled? Aren't you underestimating us a little too much that way? Don't mention that small crowd of people from yesterday, even if a crowd that is five or ten times larger came, I could still bear it. At most, I'll lose a few more customers, no? That bit of loss won't count for much at all. Ha! Huh. If we even care about this bit of money, that would be the real joke here. The hotel staff stole a glance at the president. Hey! This wasn't what you said yesterday. Your reaction was the biggest for yesterday's losses. But they understood that the president was just saying this so that he could continue portraying an imposing manner. Zhong Yi nodded and said, good. Then he continued eating breakfast. The president snorted and led his people away with a swagger. After breakfast, Zhong Yi sauntered over to the elevator and went upstairs. He went back to his room and filled the bathtub with hot water before getting in to take a hot bath. Five minutes. Ten minutes. Zhong Yi dried himself off and then brewed a cup of tea. After that, he sat himself down in front of the computer. In the president's office. Has the tour group arrived yet? They're almost here. Okay, take extra care to serve them well. We understand. Don't worry about that Zhong Yi anymore. He did not really affect us too much even after causing that mess yesterday. He's probably going to behave himself over the next few days. 
after having a look at the sky outside, the president broke into a smile. It was rare to have such good weather with the sun shining so brightly, so their business would surely be quite good today as well. All of a sudden, someone pushed the door open. President! They're here! What are you shouting for? Isn't it just a tour group? They're already here? It's not the tour group. Come and see this! Everyone in the room was startled. The president and several of the executive's heart skipped a beat as they ran to the window and opened it to look down. When they saw it, they nearly slumped to the ground. A 100 people. A 1,000 people. 2,000 people. The enraged crowd was converging in from all directions. The president froze. Didn't the police already handle things yesterday? An executive was shocked silly from the sight. What the heck? Why are they here again? Then someone pointed at the computer and shouted, Oh my God! Look at this! It's on the internet! The president and the others all leaned over to have a look and nearly spat out a mouthful of blood. Yamada Akira's social network. John Yi's commented, Are you crazy or what? Sent from the Asakusa Hotel, Tokyo. Fujiwara's social network. John Yi's commented, Are you crazy or what? Sent from the Asakusa Hotel, Tokyo. It was all John Yi. The Japanese social network was covered with John Yi's fingerprints again. This time, it wasn't just 10 or 20 celebrities. This time, on this day, John Yi had launched his tirade on a hundred Japanese celebrities. Loud, cursing voices suddenly boomed from the president's office. Your grandpa. John. You mother hecker. This is crazy. That John feller is a madman. Oh my god. Quick, close the doors. Hurry. Call the police. Call the police first. John Yi, heck your sister. You may hecking wish to die. But don't drag us into it. Outside, the crowd was growing larger and larger. A lot of people were standing in front of the hotel and cursing at them. In the end, it grew to a crowd of several thousand people, which was five to ten times the amount of yesterday's crowd. The executives looked resentfully at the president. Why did you have to say those words to spite John Yi? You wouldn't be afraid even if it was a crowd that was five times larger? It would be fine even if it was a crowd that was ten times larger. Damn. He actually managed to gather that many people today. The president blanched. The Asakusa Hotel staff were also stunned. It was only now that they remembered that Zhong Yi was the one and only philanthropic ambassador of Asia. It was only now that they remembered that all the charities in Asia were backing Zhong Yi. In Asia, one could offend the common folk, the business people, or the celebrities, but no one would dare to offend anyone from the charities. There was really no one who dared to do that. This wasn't just some ordinary organization they were talking about. Such organizations usually had great influence and credibility among the people, and were not comparable to any other organization in the world. They were basically an organization that no one would dare offend, nor want to offend. This organization and its people had always been committed to philanthropy and rarely took part in any other matters, but that did not mean that they had no temper. Just some days ago, when Japan and Korea joined hands to get Zhong Yi banned and restricted him from entering their countries, Several major figures of the association collectively protested against the action. They made calls to the highest levels of authority and wrote letters of protest that were placed onto the desks of the highest executives. And for the outcome that was now known by everyone, the Japanese and Korean governments modified their restriction order to allow Zhong Yi to freely enter their countries when there were charity events taking place. Also avoiding the ban were Zhong Yi's PSAs and his participation in those charity events. Even the Japanese and Korean governments had to give in. Much less any other organization? Much less the Asakusa Hotel? A small private hotel? Who had now attracted the personal denouncement of a major figure from the Asian Charity Association? They wouldn't dare unless they were crazy. President. This, this, that John Yi, he, the booking could not be cancelled. They could not chase him away either. The hotel president's face sank as he grit his teeth and said, All right. Isn't it only for ten days? No, there are only nine days left. 
I'll just have to accept it this time. Surely he can't keep staying here all his life, can he? If he wishes to stay here, then let him stay. The police have already come and handled the matter anyway. And we only lost a few guests, didn't we? We can stand these few losses. There will still be another wave of tour groups arriving tomorrow and the day after. Everyone, pay attention and service the tour groups well. We'll make up what we lost, so don't get affected by what happened today. From tomorrow onwards, business will resume as usual. This bit of setback is no big deal. Yes. Understood. Got it, President. Everyone responded to his speech and then went back to their work. However, each time they passed by the room that Zhong Yi was staying in, everyone could not help but steer clear of it. Chapter 1432, The Hotel Gets Wrecked. The scolding voices on the streets thundered. The shouting was so loud that even the guests in the hotel across the road could hear it. When little Wang leaned out the window to have a look, she paled. This is bad. They're here again. Oh my hecking heavens. Why are there so many more people today? What? This is bad. What should we do? What has Director Zhong done this time? Ah, check out the internet. Director Zhong went to direct his scolding at over a hundred Japanese celebrities. What did you say? Over a one hundred? Holy shit. What is Director Zhong trying to do? Hachichi was looking very anxious. Zhong Yi had told them not to worry about him, and to just concentrate on their work and not look for him, but as the external communications manager at Zhong Yi's studio, how could she possibly just sit around and do nothing? At a time like this, everything else was secondary. The only thing that mattered was the safety of Director Zhong. Who could guarantee that he would be fine? As such, Ha Chichi immediately told Yang Shu, little Yang, hurry over to where Director Zhong is. But Yang Shu said, Senior bro instructed me to take care of you all and told me not to leave your side. Little Wang yelled, Aya, look at the current situation. What's there to protect us from? Little Sun added anxiously, Yeah, Director Zhong's safety is the priority. If those people manage to get inside, who will be responsible for Director Zhong's safety? Sister Yang, hurry up and go. Senior bro's safety? Yang Shu glanced out of the window and curled her lips. She dismissed, just with those people, they could never get near my senior bro. Everyone rolled their eyes. Why are you still bragging on behalf of Director Zhong at this time? There are several thousand people out there, so how is it impossible that they can't get near Director Zhong? Do you think he's a sorcerer with an AoE attack? However, only Yang Shu knew that at the level of Zhong Yi's and RAOI means martial arts. It was no longer a matter of being outnumbered. It didn't matter how many people there were since her senior brother could take care of three of such ordinary attackers with just a single slap. Once he sent twenty to thirty of them flying, no one else would dare go against him. Having the numbers and using the ordinary way of piling up to overpower her senior brother was a possibility that only existed in theory. However, that was all bullshit in a practical situation. The Asakusa Hotel Back upstairs. Zhong Yi pushed open the windows and sat down at them looking all calm and relaxed. He picked up his cell phone. And started reading comics. As well as sipping on his tea. Meanwhile, the situation downstairs had boiled over. Zhong Yi. He's over there. It's him. Damn. We finally found him. He didn't leave yet. That bastard. Get out here. Who were you calling crazy? You're the crazy one. You've gone mad. This is infuriating. He's pissing me off. You had better get out of Japan. Not many people had experienced getting scolded by several thousand people before, and a scene like this was very difficult to put into words. At the front and back entrances of the hotel, and up to three streets away, it was densely packed with people everywhere. The police arrived very quickly as five police vehicles reached the scene in succession. However, when the dozen odd police officers alighted from their vehicles, they were stunned by what they saw. All of them drew in a sharp breath as they stood among the rioting crowd. 
they could not even hear their own shouting voices as the raging crowd's scolding voices drowned them out immediately. There were simply too many people. They immediately called for more support. Even the police officers were panicking. Much less those in the hotel. The two groups of tourists who had just arrived were petrified by the scene. Their tour bus could not even get to the entrance of the hotel as it got stuck in traffic three streets away. The tour guide was pissing his pants. The driver nearly fainted from fright. This, what's going on? Is there a riot going on? How can we still stay at such a place? Let's cancel the booking. Right, we don't want to stay here. We're here on vacation. We won't be risking our lives like this. The few buses immediately turned around and went back the way they came. Inside the hotel. The telephone lines were bursting with calls. President, the tour group has cancelled the hotel bookings. President, the tour group from the UK has also cancelled their bookings. President, we're getting a load of complaint calls. What do we do now? What should we do? The president shouted with a dark look, calm down, all of you, calm down. Don't worry, the police are already here. The situation will be brought under control, so quickly go and close the doors, and get a few young and strong employees to hold down the gates. We mustn't allow anyone to get in. Those people are just scolding to vent their anger and wouldn't dare be rash. The situation was in a deadlock. One minute. Five minutes. People were still arriving in waves. Some came by themselves, while others brought along their whole family to denounce Zhong Yi. The media and television stations' vehicles were also parked all over the place. The reporters got out of the vehicles in shock as they took in the view before them. Having lived for so long, and worked as a reporter for so many years, this was also the first time that they'd witnessed a scene like this. Some of the reporters looked up at where Zhong Yi was staying and started scolding as well. In Japan, Zhong Yi had become the target of everyone's criticisms. The Japanese media. The Japanese celebrities. The Japanese public. Everyone was gnashing their teeth in hatred. How dare you scold our celebrities in our country? You scolded them one after another? And didn't stop after scolding them for one day? And then carried on scolding them for a second day? You're back to scold them having already scolded them yesterday? This is unacceptable. No one behaves in the way that you did. But the people outside could not make their way into the hotel. The police were standing guard at the doorways and the hotel staff had already blocked off the entrances. Although it was a large turnout and there were a lot of rioters, it seemed like the matter was going to end in the same way it did yesterday. However, at this moment, Zhong Yi, who was sitting at the window upstairs, suddenly put away his cell phone and looked down for the first time. Then he said something. He said it in Japanese. Zhong Yi said, if you have a problem, come at me. Don't wreck the hotel. Hearing that, the president nearly face-planted. Zhong Yi. Heck your ancestors. There was nothing wrong with what he had just said. Everyone was only here because of Zhong Yi and had no intentions of wrecking the hotel. But when these well-intentioned words came out of Zhong Yi's mouth, it sparked something in the raging crowd gathered outside the hotel. All of them cried out in anger. Bang! A loud crash boomed. A rock smashed into the hotel's glass window. It had been aimed at the window Zhong Yi was at, but as that was so high up that nobody could reach it with a throw, it resulted in a glass window on the third floor getting smashed instead. Someone was inside the room when the glass window shattered, and the sound of the guest's shocked screams instantly rang out from inside. The police were dumbfounded. Stop! Stop that! With someone leading by example, a second person and third person followed suit. Crush him! Crush! Everybody, get him! Bang! A second crash boomed. A third crash. A fourth crash. Many people were picking up items from around them and throwing them upwards. Some people threw eggs. Some people threw bricks. Some people threw instant noodles. What Zhong Yi spoke was too devious. It was simply too evil. A lot of people had never thought about wrecking the hotel, but the moment he mentioned it, everyone erupted into action. 
Crash. Thud. Plonk. The hotel turned into a war zone. The people outside were calling for an execution. Inside the hotel, chaos ensued among the guests. Holy heck. Who threw a slipper in? The heck. Why did a sanitary pad get thrown in here? Mother hecker, why are you all throwing things at me for? All hell broke loose. Everything descended into chaos. The hotel staff lost their spirit. The president slumped to the floor with a thump and a stunned look. It's over. Everything's finished. Chapter 1433, A Champion of Communism. Two hours later. At a room in the hotel across the road. Little Wang wiped away her sweat. They're gone. Little Ju said with lingering fear, oh, my heart. Little Sun had nearly pissed his pants. I wouldn't have come if I'd known this would happen. Hachichi smiled wryly. When we get back, I'll have to talk to HR about the recruitment process for our new staff. The criteria for all new hires should be for them to have strong mental fortitude. Else, if we encounter such situations again in the future, not everyone will be able to withstand the stress. Little Wang did not know whether to laugh or cry. That mouth of Director Jong's, there's really no one else like him. The Asakusa Hotel. The crowd had dispersed, leaving behind shambles. The Asakusa Hotel had gone through turmoil and was barely recognizable. Its outer walls were all vandalized with swear words, and there were even traces of rotten eggs on it. The majority of the glass windows from the fifth floor and down were also shattered, leaving many of the rooms unprotected from the elements. The hotel lobby's glass and revolving doors were also spat on by many of the rioters while the floor was in an even worse state. Rocks, plastic bags, glass fragments, sanitary pads, wooden staves, thermos flasks, and basically anything that you could find in a supermarket were strewn all over the place. The president was crying. The hotel staff were crying. How much had they lost? This had probably cost them more than several million in damages. If they had known that this would happen, they wouldn't have allowed him to stay here. If they had known, they would never have agreed to let Zhong Yi check into the hotel no matter what. They'd heard of Zhong Yi's notoriety before, but until they witnessed it with their own eyes, they had always believed that the rumors were exaggerated. So it turned out that Zhong Yi's notoriety was even more notorious than it was reported in the news. He had only said a few words, but it was precisely because of those few words that their hotel was in such a state. What kind of a person was this? What kind of a hooligan was this? They had finally learned to be afraid of him. This time, they were truly scared of him. If anyone had told them in the past that Zhong Yi could set off an earth shattering storm with just his mouth alone, without having to lift a finger, they would never have believed it even if their lives depended on it. But now that they'd witnessed it for themselves, they were finally convinced. That wicked mouth of Zhong Yi's could hecking kill someone. The president roared, I'll fight it out with him. Everyone rushed over to hold him back. President. Calm down. Don't do something stupid. The president shouted, my hotel. Look at my hotel. An executive howled, why haven't the police arrested him? Someone else said, yeah, he was the one who got the rioters to wreck our hotel. Someone hesitated for a bit before saying, I think he said to not wreck the hotel. Everyone was speechless. What a bastard. He was intentionally messing with us. H how are we supposed to carry on doing business like this? The bookings have all been cancelled. There's no business left for us to do. President, is it because of those magazines? President, why don't we, those magazines, the moment someone brought it up, the president angrily cut them off. Impossible. The magazines must not be touched. Jong. I'm going to take it all the way with him. At the Asakusa Hotel, only the staff were still around. After the rioters had dispersed, all of the hotel's guests packed their luggage and checked out en masse. Some of them had only just checked in, but they were already asking to check out without even wanting a refund. All of them took their luggage and left the hotel in a panic, not wanting to stay around for even a minute longer. Who could take this? With all that fighting and rioting happening, they would be putting their lives at risk if they continued to stay. 
Which of these guests would want a sanitary pad or instant noodles flying through their windows while they slept in their rooms? All of the guests left. Except for one. Only John Yi remained behind. He continued to stay without a care as the sole remaining guest of this large hotel. Noon. It was lunchtime. Zhong Yi strolled downstairs and came to the cafeteria. It was deserted. Not only was it devoid of guests, no meals were being served. The staff all turned to look at him, wishing they could go up and bite him. Zhong Yi wondered out loud, where's the food? Where's the buffet? Everyone nearly vomited blood. You still want the buffet? There isn't a guest in the hotel other than you. Even the cooks have gone home. Besides, this entire farce was started by you, and all of those people came for your head. You were the one who caused our hotel to be in this state, so how dare you come down and ask to eat? Why don't you just die? Zhong Yi said, hurry up and get the food ready. The service staff broke down into tears. They'd rather choose to have ten years cut from their lifespans instead of talking to Zhong Yi. Over there. The president stalked over in a rage. Zhong. Zhong Yi said, yo, if it isn't the boss. The president pointed at him and said, don't think that I'll be afraid of you. I'm not done with you. Let me tell you, Zhong Yi. This isn't over. I won't remove the magazines. Not only that, I'll even place two magazines in every room starting from today. No. I'll put three magazines. Continue to stay here. Stay as you wish. I want to see how long you can stay here for. I'll see if you don't return to your country. Since the hotel was already wrecked, the president no longer held in his anger and took it up with Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi laughed and said, Sure then, I have nothing to do anyway. The president sneered. I'll see how long you can do nothing for. Don't leave if you're so capable. He was expecting that an Asian big name like Zhong Yi would have a long schedule planned and be much busier than people like them. The charity association's event had finished up, and Zhong Yi should be returning home any moment now, so how could he stay at the hotel forever? Wouldn't he have to attend to other matters? However, he did not seem to understand Zhong Yi's temper. Don't leave if you're so capable. Zhong Yi was truly capable of that. To him, work was just a triviality. He could drop everything work-related, but he couldn't miss out on any fights. If there was a fight, he would join in. If he fought, he would definitely win. This had always been Zhong Yi's principle. Everyone knew that the president had been forced to the precipice and was afraid that something would happen. Two of the staff went over to hold him back, not because they were afraid that the president would take it out on Zhong Yi, but because they were afraid that Zhong Yi would make a move on him. The video of Zhong Yi smashing the Korean car brand's bulletproof cars from several days ago had also made its way around Japan so they were terrified that their president would get shredded by a single slap from him. Soon after, Zhong Yi placed his hands behind his back and sauntered out of the hotel to get some food. The president was so angry that he was panting heavily. He said loudly, go and clean his room, then place three magazines, no, place five magazines in there. One at the bedside. One on the study desk. One in the bathroom. Put them everywhere and also, cut off the internet access to his room. Shut off his power. And shut off the water supply for him as well. I'll see how long he can continue staying here. Okay. Yes. Understood. A group of service staff puffed off. In the afternoon. When Zhong Yi returned to the room, he was amused. There were the problematic reading materials everywhere on the study desk and bed. The bathroom was not cleaned, and a lot of areas were not tidied up either. When he tried connecting to the internet, he realized that the connection was dead. When he turned on the tap, there was no water either. Fine. Not bad. This is what will make things interesting. This is what will add some spice to the fight. If it were anyone else that had their internet, water supply, and power cut off. They would have flared up long ago. However. Zhong Yi was different. This fellow was totally enjoying it. This was the mark of a true warrior. He was a champion of communism deep down inside and enjoyed fighting. Chapter 1434, I'll admit defeat, alright? 
on the third day of his stay. In the morning, Zhong Yi called Ha Chichi. Old Ha, what's the Wi Fi password over there? Ah. The password. 12345, okay, got it. You don't have a connection over there? Nope. Then why are you still staying there? It's precisely because of this that I got to stay here. After hanging up, Zhong Yi tried connecting to the Wi Fi network. But because it was across the street, the signal wasn't great and was quite intermittent, although it could still be used. He took out a high capacity portable charger and connected it to his cell phone. Then he leaned back on the sofa and continued reading comics. Everything carried on as usual. Zhong Yi was enjoying his stay here. On top of that, he didn't go online to scold Japanese celebrities either. Upstairs. In the president's office. Everyone had gathered for a meeting with their guards up. Is Zhong Yi up yet? I think he's awake. He didn't post anything, did he? Not today, he didn't. Ha ha, that's great then. President, are we going to open for business as usual? Of course. We've already cleaned up the place downstairs. Even though many of the rooms below the fifth floor can't be used for the guests, the ones on the upper floors are all fine. The room's windows are all undamaged, and we can still accept bookings as usual. We'll see if that can make up for the losses. When that jinx of a Zhong Yi is gone, we will carry on with the hotel operations while we redecorate the rooms on the fifth floor and below. This is the best plan that I thought up yesterday to recoup our losses. As they were speaking. Clang. A sound made everyone jump in fright. What's the matter? What's happening? Damn, who threw that? Why are they at it again? But Zhong Yi didn't scold anyone today. My god, another 100 odd people have gathered out there. Clang. Bang. There was a flurry of scolding voices outside. Get out of Japan. John Yi, come out. I'll come here every day as long as you're here. Denouncing John Yi. Denouncing John Yi. The shouts were deafening. This affair had turned all Japan upside down. John Yi had torn a hole in the sky here, and all eyes in Japan were now looking at the Asakusa Hotel in anger. There was no need for Zhong Yi to continue provoking anyone. It just wasn't necessary anymore. Zhong Yi didn't have to say anything to make the rioters descend upon the hotel. Moreover, the people who came here were clearly organized groups now, with some people leading others. When the hotel called the police, they would immediately turn around and disappear without a trace. The Asakusa Hotel had another dozen of its glass windows smashed. The president was cursing and swearing at this in his office. On the fourth day of Zhong Yi's stay. Around 4 a.m. when it was still dark. The president and hotel staff were all fast asleep. Bang! Thud! The Asakusa Hotel's personnel awoken in fright. Then they heard thunderous scoldings from outside again. Get out of Japan, Zhong Yi! Denouncing Zhong Yi! Everyone, let's stand united and boycott him. Make Zhong Yi scram back to China. This time, the hotel's revolving door was destroyed as well. The president and the hotel staff only dared to come out when the police arrived and the rioting crowd dispersed. Seeing this sorry sight, they were all going crazy with hatred. Zhong. Why hasn't he left yet? Who knows? He'll be leaving. It should be soon. Right, he has so much work to handle. Surely he won't stay for much longer. Meanwhile, Zhong Yi, who was upstairs in his room, did not wake up. He was still sleeping like a log in his room. Come to think of it, it was really strange because Zhong Yi often did not sleep well when everything was going well. However, it seemed like he could get a really good night's sleep now that he was caught in conflict with other people. He felt extremely at peace with himself and did not even get awoken by the commotion outside. On the fifth day of Zhong Yi's stay, the hotel's personnel did not see any rioters come on this fearful day. Just as they were about to heave a sigh of relief and turn in, the rioters came. This wave of people arrived at 11 p.m. It was clearly a different group of people this time. They did not wreck the place but stood downstairs cursing and swearing. They scolded John Yi. They scolded the hotel. 
They scolded everything. They kept at it until the latter half of the night. The hotel president was already in the wrong state of mind. For the past two days, he had not had any shut eye and stood angrily at the window while looking at the people down below in fear. The staff around him had bags under their eyes and looked like they were in a trance. It has been five days. Five days already. Why hasn't he left yet? This bastard, when on earth is he planning to leave? Soon, it will definitely be soon. Hold on for a bit longer. He definitely wouldn't stay here for the full ten days. President, this is my resignation letter. What? I, I can't take it anymore. Me too, I haven't slept for two days. On this day, seven staff members resigned from the hotel. On the sixth day of Zhong Yi's stay. All of the Asakusa hotel staff were wandering around, muttering some strange and incomprehensible incantations to themselves. Leave quickly. Lord have mercy, make him leave quickly. He will definitely check out today, he will definitely check out today. The scolding outside the hotel was still going on. The current state of the Asakusa Hotel looked like a landfill. It was a terrible sight, and the paint on the walls was peeling as well, the glass windows were all shattered. Anyone passing by stopped to take a look at the hotel. Some people even took their wives and children there in a taxicab to watch the commotion as they explained to their children what had happened. It was as though the place had become a tourist destination. Right now in Japan, the Asakusa Hotel was a place that everyone know about. John Yi is coming out. Get out of Japan. This was the fourth wave of people to come today. It was the sixth day. There were a total of ten waves of people. The president's face had gone numb. Someone came into the room. President. The president looked at him with a dull face. Has John Yi left yet? That person said despondently, not yet. I just passed by his room and think I heard him listening to songs inside. Listening to songs? He was in the mood to listen to songs? The president was furious and banged his fist on the table. He said, why isn't he leaving yet? Just how much longer does he want to stay? It's already been six days. We haven't received a single booking. There isn't any more business for us to do. He's trying to kill us. Then he roared, close the business. We'll stop business operations starting today. Cancel his booking. That person said, I've already made a call. The charity association's coordinator said that they made the hotel booking, so we aren't allowed to shortchange them for even a day. The president was disheartened. That person said, there are still four days left. The president pointed outside and said angrily, for days. Look for yourself. Can our hotel last another four days? In just two more days, our building is going to collapse. At this moment, a service staffer rushed in excitedly. President, we've received a booking. The president said happily, oh? The service staffer said, we just received it. It's a booking for half a year. Half a year? That long? Yes, it's a long-term booking. The president said, good, good, this is a good sign. There's still someone who wants to stay at our hotel at this time, and that shows that our unyielding attitude has been chiseled into the minds of the people, and they've recognized us for it. Our reputation is out there, so all we need now is to make Zhong Yi leave. After he's gone, our hotel will be redecorated and upgraded to an even better one. The service staff said, that's right. The president said, tell everyone to stand firm for a little longer. Victory is right before our eyes. But at this time, another staff member suddenly came running into the room. She panted, that's not it. Something bad has happened. The president was taken aback. What happened this time? The staff said, it's that booking. The president quickly asked, what's wrong with that booking? The staff said anxiously, th that booking came from someone by the name of Chu Hua Hua at the charity association. It was an extension for John Yi's stay. He's going to extend his stay to half a year. What? Half a year? John Yi wants to stay here for half a year? Heck you, mother hecker. Upon hearing that, the entire room of people were stunned. 
the president lost his balance and fell to the ground. Look at what this jinx has caused our hotel to become after staying here for just six days. And he wants to stay for half a year? Won't that level our entire building to the ground then? The president was having a mental breakdown. Everyone in the hotel nearly collapsed when they heard this news. At this moment, they finally knew what kind of an asshole they had offended. The president had to admit defeat. He really had to admit defeat this time. He didn't know if Zhong Yi would really dare to stay here for half a year more, but he didn't want to find out either. My brother. You're my dear brother. I can't afford to mess with you. I'll admit defeat. I'll hecking admit defeat, all right. Chapter 1435, The Evil Can Only Be Subdued by the Evil. At the hotel. In the room. An elegant piece of music was drifting within as Zhong Yi sat on the sofa, slowly humming along to it. He was really enjoying the relaxing mood from these several days of rare break that he had gotten in over a year. Yes, to Zhong Yi, this was indeed a break. It was a vacation for him because he didn't have to do anything, nor was he bothered by all the fighting and rioting happening outside. All of a sudden, the lights came on. The sound of running water came from the bathroom. The power was back on? The water supply had come back. Zhong Yi narrowed his eyes and raised his head. Shortly after, the doorbell rang. After Zhong Yi answered the door, he saw the hotel president and several executives standing outside. He calmly said, Yo, what are all of you doing here? The president said, We came here to have a look. There have been too many incidents happening in the past few days, so we didn't have time to take care of many things. We only just found out that the power had been cut and the water supply was stopped. Zhong Yi smiled and said, It's fine, I'm a man who can make do with whatever is given. I was born into a poor family, so I'm not picky about such things. It's fine as long as there's somewhere for me to sleep. The hotel's top brass rolled their eyes. The president coughed and said, It's been so noisy for the past few days with so many waves of people gathering outside every day. Even if you could sleep, I doubt that you had sleep well, isn't that so? Zhong Yi said in surprise, No? Ah. Zhong Yi said, I think I slept rather well. The president and the executives were speechless. Are you allowing for a discussion to take place? Tell us. Are you allowing for a discussion to take place? You slept well? But we didn't sleep well. The president said angrily, Teacher Zhong, let's not beat around the bush. Just say it. What do we have to do to make you leave? Zhong Yi said calmly, I've already told you about my two demands, and I don't wish to repeat myself again. The president had a ghastly look on his face. I know that you have the Asian Charity Association backing you. We cannot afford to offend them, but if we were to just stop running the hotel altogether, there's nothing they can say or do about it. Zhong Yi looked at him. Then go ahead and do it. The president didn't expect him to say this and was taken back. Zhong Yi said, but when you finish redecorating and resume business, give me a heads up. I rather like your place, so I'll make sure to come back here to stay again. I can be quite free with nothing to do when I go back to my country, so I think I will come here to stay for a few days each time whenever my yearly schedule allows. Oh yes, do you have a membership program? You do offer discounts to your loyal customers, right? Membership program? You still want a hacking membership card? Have you enjoyed staying here? Get out of here. Hurry up and get out of here. The president was sweating profusely. He couldn't imagine that scene that Zhong Yi had just described a moment ago. Come here to stay a few times a year? For a few days each time? We wouldn't have enough floors to get wrecked if that was the hecking case. The president was scared shitless. He said, all right, don't say any more. Just stop. You're more ruthless than I am. I give up, I thoroughly give up. Zhong Yi said, the two demands. The president was crying. I'll get them done. I'll get them done immediately. Zhong Yi pouted for some reason. Hey, why are you agreeing to it so easily? I haven't even shown you what I am truly capable of yet. Since Zhong Yi was here, he would surely get the matter settled. Before he came here, he had already devised a plan with more than ten different ways of causing trouble for them. 
but unexpectedly, he had only used one method so far and the Asakusa Hotel's personnel were already left genuflecting. This gave Zhong Yi no sense of accomplishment at all. Across the sea. China. The Asakusa Hotel was all over the news and the internet in recent days. The commotion in Japan, as well as the latest updates on Zhong Yi, were all setting off unending laughter back at home. The Asakusa Hotel has been wrecked again. Quickly, come and see this. There's a picture spreading showing the latest appearance of the Asakusa Hotel. They've been given a fresh coat of pain again? Beautifully done. How many times is this today? It's already the third time today. Foot, I'm doubling over in laughter. They're really down on their luck. Ha 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 ha, Lord Jong is so awesome. What a goddamn great way to blow off steam. Yeah, face smacking Jong is too cruel. Jong Yi is still staying there? Of course, he's still staying there. I heard that they cut off his power and water. Ayo, hey, these past few days have been too hecking funny for me. Yeah, Jong Yi is merciless. Ah. There's news. What news? Go and watch. It's broadcasting on TV. Damn, Central TV News Channel is broadcasting live. On TV. The Asakusa Hotel had called a press conference. Many Asian reporters and media outlets were in attendance. It was extremely chaotic, and it could be seen on camera that many other reporters did not manage to get into the venue. Meanwhile, some of the other reporters could not get a seat after getting inside and had to stand in the aisles where the cameras were set up. When the hotel president appeared, countless reporters immediately shoved their cameras and microphones at him. The president sat down on stage. After a moment of silence, he announced three matters. 1. The Asakusa Hotel would be closed for business for three months with immediate effect. 2. The Asakusa Hotel would remove all problematic reading materials permanently. 3. The Asakusa Hotel formally apologized to China, Korea, and the other Asian countries. After saying all that, the president stood up. The other executives of the hotel also stood up. Facing the camera, the president and the others bowed deeply. The press conference ended. Immediately, there was a jubilant mood across Asia. China. They've apologized. Quickly watch the news on Central TV. They've finally apologized. The problematic mags have been removed. There's finally a conclusion to the matter. Lord Zhong. Well done. Damn, Zhong Yi was so cool in the way he resolved things. He's so dashing. I love him to death. I didn't used to chase after celebrities, but I'm going to follow Zhong Yi closely from now on. I've never liked a celebrity so much before. I've got to apologize to Zhong Yi as well. When I learned that he had checked into the Asakusa Hotel, I totally misunderstood him. I should have known better. When has Teacher Zhong ever disappointed us? Teacher Zhong, you did well. I'm so excited. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this turn of events. Hecking hell, we still have to depend on Zhong Yi when push comes to shove. When this matter was first exposed, so many people were criticizing the Asakusa Hotel. Even the Chinese and Korean celebrities expressed their stance on the matter and brought more attention to it. They also denounced the hotel, but so what? The hotel simply ignored all their criticisms and the issue remained unsolved. And what can they do about that? The situation just remained as was, didn't it? But look at Teacher Zhong. He managed to get things done. Only he is capable of doing something like that. We have to cherish Teacher Zhong. It really wasn't easy for a celebrity like him to come out of China. Meanwhile, Korea was actually praising this as well. Several days ago, the Koreans were scolding him together with the Japanese. But just a few days later, the Koreans and Chinese banded together against a new common enemy. We won't be scolding Zhong Yi today. Right, we won't be scolding him today. Even if we are, we'll leave it until tomorrow to scold him. The reason why this matter has been resolved is all thanks to that fellow. This matter was really well handled. There's a Chinese saying, the evil can only be subdued by the evil. Zhong Yi might be evil, but when people like those from the Asakusa Hotel exist, we still have to depend on a villain like Zhong Yi to subdue them. 
This is truly the biggest hooligan of our Asian entertainment industry. A vermin that only appears once every 10,000 years is indeed a worthy title for him. Chapter 1436, Never Has There Been a Celebrity Who Grows Their Popularity This Way. Noon. Packing the luggage. Taking the suitcase. Zhang Yi took the elevator downstairs. When he stepped out, he realized that all of the Asakusa Hotel staff were standing there looking at him. He walked to the front desk and took out some documents. Zhang Yi said, checking out. Immediately. The receptionist took it from him. In the next second. The receptionist handed the passport back to him. She said speedily, it's done. Zhang Yi said, that fast? The receptionist said, wiping off her sweat, yes, that's right. Zhang Yi nodded and turned around to leave. Many of the staff watched him as he made his way out. Zhang Yi said, it's fine, you guys don't have to see me out. The staff were surprised. Ah? Zhang Yi said, go back to work, y'all. Who's seeing you out? Which of your eyes are telling you that we're seeing you out? When Zhang Yi exited the hotel, he stood outside on the sidewalk and stretched himself. Then he flipped open his bag and took out a face mask and sunglasses to put them on. When it was time to stand out, he would stand out. Now that the Asakusa Hotel incident was handled, it was time to keep a low profile again. He crossed the road and came to the hotel opposite. Upstairs. He knocked on the door. The door was opened by Little Wang. Little Wang was taken aback. Director Zhong? Little Ju came running out. Ah, Director Zhong is back. Are you all right? Zhong Yi smiled and said, what could possibly happen to me? Little Sun said loudly, Teacher Zhong, you were amazing. Little Wang said, yeah, and the issue has been resolved too. Zhong Yi chuckled. All right, all right, since that issue has been handled, let's get down to business here. I didn't exactly come to Japan for them anyway. It was just a by-the-by thing. Ha Chichi laughed and said, the comic series is currently being handled. All right, then let's get me a room, Zhong Yi said. Little Wang said happily, okay, I'll go and process it. Little Wang took Zhong Yi's passport and headed downstairs without a second thought. About five to six minutes later, Little Wang came back to the room with a look of speechlessness. She was followed by several of the hotel's managers who looked horrified. A female manager hurriedly said, Teacher Zhong, we don't have any rooms left. There's really no more rooms left. Little Ju said, but that's impossible. Aren't there still a lot of empty rooms? A male manager wiped at his sweat and said, there really aren't any left, none at all. Can you find somewhere else to stay at, please? Thank you in advance. How about this? We'll foot the bill at this hotel. Let us pay for it. The few of them looked alarmed and jittery. Later that afternoon, they switched to a different hotel. When the receptionist took their passports from them, they were shocked. Ah. John Yi. We'd like to check in. There are no more rooms. They've all been booked. Weren't you checking in other guests just a moment ago? There are really no rooms left. We don't mind a standard room. The standard rooms are also not available anymore. They switched to yet another hotel. The receptionist at this hotel had the same expression as the one at the previous hotel and immediately made a call to the hotel manager. When the manager learned about this, they nearly pissed their pants. Don't accept his booking. You must not accept it. Just tell them that our hotel is full. If that doesn't work, stop all business operations. Don't process any more bookings from any customers. The hotel was in turmoil. They got so scared that they nearly wanted to stop their business operations. In the end, a hotel that had a Chinese owner ended up hosting John Yi. Although the hotel was not big and the place a little out of the way, the environment was pretty good. The owner was a fat man who was very warm and welcoming. Ha Chichi smiled and said, we finally found a place to stay at. The fat boss laughed heartily. Don't worry, just stay here as you like. You don't have to pay and I welcome you all to stay for as long as you want. Just do as you please and make yourselves at home. Zhong Yi said, that won't do. We still have to pay what is due. 
but the fat owner said, I would ask to get paid if it were anyone other than you. You would be insulting me if you insisted. If you want to pay me, then I don't welcome you here, ha ha. I guarantee you that no other hotel in Tokyo will take your booking. They're in a state of panic right now. Not long after the Asakusa Hotel ended their press conference, I heard that many of the hotels in Tokyo started adopting stricter measures when processing new bookings. As long as it's a room booking from a charity or China, the managers will make sure to screen the bookings personally. They're all doing so because they're afraid that you'll somehow end up staying at their place. They're assuming you're like a ticking time bomb. Little Wang and Little Ju laughed, but did not say anything. A time bomb? With that mouth of Director Jong's, he's definitely much worse than a time bomb. Finally, everyone settled down. After Zhong Yi returned to his room, he charged his phone. Only now did he realize he had missed a lot of calls. Just as he was about to return some of them, a call came in. Hello, mom. Why couldn't I get through for so long? Hi, I just charged my cell phone. Did you get hurt? No, I'm fine. You rascal. You're such a troublemaker. I should have known that nothing good would come out of your overseas trip. Ha ha, how's old Wu? She's pretty good. I go over every day to prepare meals for Ziching. It's been hard on you, mom. I'll be going home in another two days. Come home quickly. Zhong Xia. Yao Jiantsai. Chen Guang. Xu Mai Lan. The calls from his friends and relatives were coming in one after another. Zhong Yi answered them all. When evening fell, everyone gathered in the room and had a meeting. Ha Chichi said, Director Zhong, if you're going to do something next time, can you please inform us in advance? Let us be mentally prepared so that we don't have to be so shocked. Do you know how terrified we were during these past several days when the hotel you were staying at got surrounded by all those people? We couldn't even sleep well. However, Zhong Yi brushed it off. It's no big deal. Little Ju gave a bitter laugh. It might not be a big deal to you, but it affected us greatly. Coming out on a business trip with you nearly gave me a heart attack this time. Director Zhong, please don't take me along the next time you go on any business trips. This one time is more than enough for me. Pausing, she sighed and then said, but I've also benefited from this. Having gone through all these major incidents with you on this trip, I won't have anything to be afraid of if I ever encounter another major incident in the future. This is such good training. Little Wang giggled and said, right, if you've worked with Director Zhong, you've seen it all. Little Sun asked, is our Asian popularity going to go up again? Ha Chichi looked at her watch. We'll find out in a while. But Zhong Yi didn't seem to have thought about this. He hadn't checked the rankings either in these past several days. Did it go up again? Ha Chichi smiled and said, after reaching the middle of the Asian A-list rankings, your position didn't really move. But during these past several days, it went up by a little again. After all, the fallout from the Asakusa Hotel incident was quite widespread. Who in the whole of Asia does not know about it? With that issue now settled, there will surely be another outbreak of popularity. Just have a look at the internet and the news. For the entire day today, besides in China, many of the other Asian countries, including Korea and Japan, are talking about you and discussing this matter. This time, even the Koreans are praising you, so let's hope that there will be a pleasant surprise later. Zhong Yi said, All right, let's wait and see then. An hour. Two hours. Everyone sat in the room and chatted while drinking tea. Similarly, many people and industry insiders from China, Japan, Korea, and other countries were also waiting for the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index to be updated. They were also curious to see Zhong Yi's ranking. When it was time, they saw it. One spot. Two spots. On the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index, Zhong Yi's name had actually advanced by two spots. China. What the heck? Quick, look at the Asian celebrity rankings. It's risen again. Zhong Yi's popularity has risen again. Eh? He can even increase his popularity like this. Amazing, my lord Zhong. Japan. What? Why has his popularity gone up again? That damned hooligan. 
Why does his popularity get higher the more he scolds people? Who knows? How infuriating. After scolding so many of our Japanese celebrities, his popularity can still rise. Korea. He advanced by two spots. This fellow has gotten closer to reaching the summit of Asia again. Surely not, right? How much more ironic can it get? Yeah, I've never come across something like this before. How could his popularity have gone up by so much this time? Two rankings. That might not be a lot if it were the Asian C list rankings. It would still be acceptable if it was on the Asian B list rankings. But the Asian A list rankings were different. In this list, every position change required a huge amount of popularity to be earned. If that was even the case for one position change, then it was all the more so for two position changes. Countless people were dumbfounded. A lot of them were at a loss. You can even do that. Are you seriously considering fighting your way to becoming an Asian heavenly king? In all of history, never had there been a celebrity who grew their popularity in such a way. Chapter 1437, The Serialization of One Piece The next day. Tokyo. At Shinen Publishing. The number of comic publishers in Japan was as many as the amount of hair on a cow. However, of all the comic magazines out there, there were always three publishers who led the circulation one of such weekly serialized magazines targeted at teenage boys. Shnen Publishing 2. Shkancha. POO Studios 3. And Shnen Publishing was the one with the highest circulation figures. Hash 1 in Japan, number 1 in Asia, number 1 in the industry. In the editorial department. Sito Kyoko looked down at a comic manuscript with a complicated expression. She had been thinking over it for several days. Her breakfast placed on the side had already turned cold. She hadn't even taken a bite from it yet. Beside her, an editor said, What's the matter, Kyoko? Kyoko gave a wry smile. I don't know whether to submit a manuscript I have for approval. The editor said, Just submit it if you think it's good. Otherwise, axe it. Kyoko said, scratching her head, the plot is fine. It's just that the art style and character designs are so weird that it's unlike anything that I've seen in all my years as an editor. Oh. Let me have a look. Here. Pfft. Right? Right? It's indeed a little odd. Forget it, I'll just submit it and see how it goes. Across the room, someone shouted, the meeting with the editor-in-chief is starting. Everyone in the editorial department stood up silently and proceeded to the innermost conference room. Thirteen people sat around a long table. They were the key leaders of Schnen Publishing's editorial department. The editor-in-chief spoke, today, we'll discuss the serializations for the upcoming issue. The deputy editor pushed up his spectacles and said, we freed up two slots since Wani chans daily life has ended, and with Monster's Revenge coming in last place for the past three weeks in the reader polls, we've decided that we will cut it from serialization. We have to decide which other titles will take their places today. The editor-in-chief said, let's have a look then. All the recommended works had already been placed onto the table by the various editors. Everyone lowered their heads and scanned through them as the recommending editor explained their work. This won't do. Yeah, it's definitely not going to work. The plot moves too slowly. Next. This one is not bad. But it'll require some editing. The story setting is not so good. Next. They went through the manuscripts one by one. It finally came to Sito Kyoko's recommended manuscript. Kyoko said, this work was submitted by a rookie, someone by the pen name of AOE. I find the story and plot to be very good, so I submitted it for the meeting. An editor frowned. Someone who hasn't debuted. Kyoko said, that's right, a pure newcomer. Another editor said, in principle, we would never go straight to serialization with a newcomer's work. Kyoko said, I know that. But the other party has submitted 10 chapters of the manuscript in one shot. I've gone through the work and find the continuity to be very strong. Furthermore, it really suits the style of our Shinen publishing. So everyone lowered their heads to read it and were dumbfounded. What is this? What kind of artistic style is this? 
the deputy editor looked at her. What's with the character design? Another editor face palmed. This character design is done too casually. A male editor said, surely this won't do, right? The story's about pirates. A female editor said, I think it's quite good. The plot is interesting, although the character design is really ugly. Why are the eyes drawn like this? Everyone got into a heated debate. Kyoko said, I think we can forget it if it's not good enough. The editor-in-chief said calmly, let's move on to the next one. In the end, after going through a dozen different manuscripts, only one of them was unanimously approved. There was still a spot left for the serialization that no one could seem to agree on. Are there any more submissions? There are no other ones. This is all we have for the coming issue. We're still short one title. Any other works that the editors would like to recommend? Nothing, everything is here. Then let's go through them from the beginning again. The dozen manuscripts made their way around the table again. Half an hour. An hour. After a series of intense debates, and with no other good works left to choose from, the editor-in-chief picked up the manuscript of One Piece again and went through it twice in detail. All right, we'll use this. But what about its character design? This work will surely be cut even if it gets serialized. But there's really no other work that meets our criteria. That's true. There aren't many precedents of a newcomer's work being serialized either. We can only give it a try. Elsewhere. In the morning, John Yi and company were having breakfast together. At the dining table, Ha Chichi asked, they haven't replied yet. Little Sun said anxiously, no, not yet. John Yi said, who submitted the manuscript? Little Sun said, my older sister. John Yi smiled and said, all right, we'll have to thank you sister when the time comes. Little Sun hurriedly said, there's no need, Director Zhong. My sister is a diehard fan of you. When she heard that she would be submitting the final copy on your behalf, she reacted like she had been shot up with adrenaline. With a pause, he said, it's been sent in for three days, but I still haven't heard anything from my sister. It must be because there isn't any news from Shnen Publishing. Zhong Yi said, just wait a bit, there's no hurry. Little Wang said worriedly, the comics industry here is too advanced. In the streets, everyone can be seen walking around with a comic in their hands. Sister Ha and I even spotted quite a few aunties and uncles reading comics. We don't know or understand anything about this industry, so could that One Piece comic of ours really work here? They were starting to get the feeling that Zhong Yi's decision was made too hastily. Using a comic to circumvent the restriction order? Using comics and animation to break into the Japanese market? And extend that reach towards Asia? It sounded like a really good plan, and if it were successful, their popularity would surely jump by leaps and bounds. But they were laymen when it came to this, and it was even a case of being utterly inexperienced. So how could they possibly fight it out with the local, homegrown cartoonists of Japan? By depending on those weird character designs of John Yi's? That weird art style? Would it really work? At John Yi's studio, they've been slapping people's faces for the entirety of their existence. What if they got slapped this time around? How humiliating would that be? But Zhong Yi was firm as a rock. He didn't while away his days at the Asakusa Hotel. Over there, he took a cursory glance at some of the most popular comic series in Japan over the past decades and analyzed them a little. He discovered that this world's comics and animation styles were very similar to his previous world. The subject matter, genres, art styles, and many things were different, but the core was more or less the same, with a common selling point behind them. Thus, he didn't see any problems with his plan. At this moment, a call arrived. Little Sun was startled. It's from my big sister. Little Wang urged him, quickly, take the call. When he answered, Little Sun's sister could be heard yelling excitedly in such a loud voice that anyone within three meters of the phone could hear. His sister said excitedly, it went through. It went through. Little son was taken aback. Sis, what went through? His sister shouted, Shnen Publishing's editor just called me. The manuscript was passed. One piece is going to be serialized in the new issue of their weekly magazine. Little son said in surprise, that's great. 
little Wang nearly sprang out of her seat. Damn, it really went through? Zhang Yi said in amusement, what do you mean by that? Were you hoping that it wouldn't go through? Little Wang said repeatedly, no, 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 I, I just didn't expect it. This news was exhilarating to hear. Although they didn't know what kind of result One Piece could achieve, the first step had been taken. Chapter 1438, The Astonishing One Piece On this day, Friday, Shnen Publishing's new issue of their weekly magazine went on sale. In the morning, Zhong Yi's mother called again. This was already the second day that she was nagging him. Are you coming back or not? I will be going back soon. When are you coming home? Aya, tomorrow. Have you gotten so comfortable in Japan that you don't wish to come home? I have serious business to attend to over here. Who are you fighting with again? Heh, why does it always have to be a fight with others? Hasn't fighting become your main job these days? Pfft. Goodbye, mom. After hanging up and eating breakfast, Zhong Yi brought Ha Chichi, Little Wang, and the others out. They strolled on the streets and went into a huge bookstore. Such bookstores were very common in Japan. The size of the comics industry here was not something that any other country could compare with. Be it the bookstores or small shops, and even in many of the supermarkets, many comics were on sale. Moreover, they were all placed in very prominent, large zones in the stores. Standalone volumes one of comics and comic magazines could be seen at every turn. This was a country of comics and animation. The Comics and Animation Center of Asia. Little Wang looked all around her. There are so many comic series here? Little Ju asked, which ones are from Shnen Publishing? Little Sun immediately spotted it. It's over there. Everyone went over and picked up a copy. Zhong Yi flipped open a magazine and found one piece in an inconspicuous location. It was placed very far far back in the magazine and could only be seen after flipping through many pages. The magazine was quite thick and had roughly 10 serialized comics in it. Actually, as a Chinese citizen, Zhong Yi found this sort of serialization method quite difficult to accept. At least, he wouldn't have the energy to keep buying the magazine week in and week out, especially if he missed an issue, which would result in a break in the continuity of the content. But in Japan, the reading habits of the people were deeply ingrained. This was the result of cultivating it for several decades and the national sentiments being different. One page. Two pages. Three pages. The group of them were discussing as they read. Around them, streams of people kept coming over and taking the magazines. In the blink of an eye, they watched several dozen copies of the magazine getting sold. The sales volume was alarming. Little Wang asked, how do we know if a comic is popular? Ha Chichi replied, by the sales volume? Little Ju said, but aren't there a lot of different comics in one magazine? Little Sun said, it will be based on a popularity poll, the most direct way of learning the statistics. Of course, the sales volume of the magazine will still be looked at. For example, a phenomenal national cartoon could increase a comic magazine's sales by several times. That is to say, without a hint of doubt, there aren't too many comic magazines out there that can depend on just a single comic to carry the publication. Also, the sales of a comic's standalone volumes are also important. But since our series has only just had its first chapter released, there's no chance of us getting a standalone volume published yet. Little Wang asked, A, hey, why we didn't we just go straight to releasing a standalone volume? Little Ju clapped. Yeah, that would have been so great. We could have released 10 or 20 chapters at once. Ha Chichi said, with director Jong's speed, it wouldn't be a problem releasing two chapters a day. When it comes to update speed, no one is a match for director Jong. Jong Yi bragged, two chapters a day? I can do three chapters a day. Little Wang said, yeah, are there any comic magazines that are sold daily? The weeklies are too slow. This business model is problematic. It's too immature daily updates? Three chapters a day? Do you think that everyone is as abnormal as director John? When Little Sun heard this bunch of laypeople discussing the matter so seriously, he was overcome by a sense of exhaustion. At a school. Hey, have you read it yet? This week's issue of Shnen magazine? 
I just finished reading it. Marshall King is still padding the story with filler. This issue's Dark Souls is quite good. It was really hot-blooded. I like One Piece. Ah, I know that one. It's the newly serialized comic. Yeah, the first chapter's not bad. I'm looking forward to reading it. It's great, but the character designs are a little strange. On the light rail. Eh? One Piece? It's a new series? The character design is so strange. Why are the eyes so small? It's a good read, try it. Yeah, I couldn't really get into it at first either. But once I got past the weird character design, the plot and setting pleasantly surprised me. I like this comic too. At a company. AOE? A pure greenhorn? I've never heard of this person before. It could even get serialized with character design like this. Mother Hecker. But why can't I seem to get enough of it? Luffy is so cute. Yep, yep, I like him. I like Luffy too, although his eyes are a little small. How is that just a little small? It's basically just a dot. Noon. In the editorial department of Shnen Publishing. Sito Kyoko and her colleagues came back from lunch. Kyoko, the comic that you're in charge of has been serialized already? Yep, one piece. Is it that one with the really ugly character design? Don't call it that. Every cartoonist has their own style after all. This drawing style is actually, actually quite unique. It leaves a deep impression on people. All right, if you say so. The popularity rankings should be coming out soon, right? The first batch of statistics should be out soon. Let's see how the rankings are for this issue. Who do you all think will get first place? I don't have a chance. One piece was included as a stopgap for this issue. If there were any other comic worth choosing from during the editor's meeting, I wouldn't have been in the running. The deputy editor has already put it clearly that if One Piece does not perform well within 10 issues, it will be cancelled. Hi, heavens, why can't you just give me a good comic series to handle? Haha, ha, Kyoko has such bad luck. Yeah, Kyoko, you're a veteran editor, but you've never had any of the comics under you get first place. Hey, hey, can you people not bring that up? The group was teasing her. Sito Kyoko was very disappointed. On a drawing board that was hung on the wall, the result of the rankings was displayed. A lot of editors surrounded it to take a look and were very concerned about the comics they were managing. If the titles under them consistently ranked at the bottom for too long, it would be possible for the comic to get its serialization run stopped. Kyoko also wanted to look, but she was not brave enough to do so. Please, oh, please. Don't let me be in last place again this time. Close by, a lot of people were starting to exclaim. Ah. Quick, look at this. This, huh. Kyoko. Come here, Kyoko. Everyone was shouting for her. Kyoko was startled. What's the matter? She stood up and went over. Then she looked up at the drawing board. Number 1, One Piece, 1023 votes. Number 2, Marshall King, 986 votes. Number 3, Dark Souls, 922 votes. Kyoko was dumbfounded. The entire editorial department of Shinen Publishing was also dumbfounded. At some point in time, the editor-in-chief arrived, along with his two deputy editors, behind the crowd. They were all staring with hanging jaws at the drawing board, disbelief on their faces. What? One Piece got first place? That weird comic that they used to fill in a spot for the comic magazine. It had taken first place in the popularity rankings right on the first day of serialization. Was this some kind of a mistake? A second later, a lot of the editors looked at Kyoko in envy. Congratulations, Kyoko. That comic is a dark horse. You've hit the jackpot this time. Congrats on getting first. Sito Kyoko was so happy that she almost cried. A good comic? A good series? I've finally gotten one after waiting for so long. Chapter 1439, Old Wu Breaks Her Leg. The next day. Later that morning.
Zhong Yi and his entourage returned to China. When they left, everyone was still feeling a little perturbed over how they did not really understand the comics industry. But when they arrived back at home, everyone looked exhilarated. After they got off the plane, they drove back to the studio. Zhong Zui and the others were waiting for them. Director Zhong. Ayo, you're finally back. You're not hurt, are you? Don't go abroad anymore. You gave everyone such a fright. Fortunately, nothing bad happened this time. Foot, and your Asian popularity has grown further too. Zhong Yi's popularity was getting higher and higher by the day as he got closer to becoming an Asian S lister. As such, their studio naturally became more popular as well, with countless invitations to work on projects all over the country. Zhong Yi had been away for 10 days, so the work was also piling up. A lot of it had to be personally looked through by Zhong Yi. Wu Yi anxiously asked, Oh yes, how did the comic go? Ha Chichi said happily, it was a great success. Zhong's was eyes lit up as he said, Really? Little Wang said excitedly, Director Zhong's comic has been serialized. Furthermore, it received a very enthusiastic response as soon as the first chapter was released. It was ranked first in Shenen magazine's popularity poll. Seeing how no one reacted to that, Little Wang added, perhaps you guys don't grasp what all of that meant, so let's put it this way instead. You all know about Marshall King, right? Wu Yi blinked. I've watched the cartoon. Little Wang said, yes, it's that extremely popular cartoon. Marshall King's comic was ranked second place behind One Piece. Everyone was shaken. He really did it. Director Zhong's comic had really become popular. Ha Chichi said, only one chapter has been released so far, but Shenen Publishing's editorial department is placing a lot of importance on it. The editor has already given us several calls, so it seems like they're already handling this comic series with a lot of priority. Who knows? We might even get to see One Piece getting an animated adaptation soon. If that happens, it will even be able to propagate to the rest of Asia. We can only observe how popular One Piece can become for now. This is not something that anyone can guarantee at the moment, so we'll have to see how it performs. A comic series also had many levels of popularity. Becoming a little popular. Becoming very popular. Or even becoming popular on a national level. The degrees of popularity were all different. One Piece had only just started, so everything was still unknown. Zhongs was said, Director Zhong, quite a lot of work piled up over the past 10 days, Zhong Yi laughed. Put it aside, I have to go home right now. My mom has been nagging me for the past few days, so I'd better go back and report to her first. I'll come back to handle these business matters at a later time. Zhongs was said, all right, quickly head home then. He took his luggage and drove back home. Back at home. In the villa. Zhong Yi took out his key to open the door. When he went inside, he called out cheerfully, this bro's finally back. However, he realized there was something wrong with the atmosphere. It turned out that his parents were here. Furthermore, old Wu's parents were also here. Then he saw his wife. She was sitting on the sofa with one of her legs perched up. It was wrapped in a white cloth, and a car seemed to be on it. There was even a pair of crutches next to her. His mother harumphed and said, You still know to come back. Zhong Yi was horrified. Ayo, my dear wife. What's going on here? Wu Ziqing smiled and said, It's nothing, I just fell down. Zhong Yi bounded over to old Wu and crouched down beside her. He touched her leg lightly. How did you fall? Wu Ziqing smiled and said, I wasn't paying attention while walking, so I fell. The baby is fine, don't worry. Zhong Yi stared hard and said, It's not fine if you're not alright either. Wu Ziqing said, I'm fine, can't be better. You're like this, so how can you not be better? Zhong Yi's heart was aching badly. He turned around and groused to his mother, Hey, how could you have kept this from me? His mother rolled her eyes. Didn't I keep asking you to hurry back home? Zhong Yi remembered that. So it was because of this that you kept bugging me with your phone calls. Then you should have said so. If you told me directly, I would have returned two days ago. His father said, Zeqing insisted on not letting us tell you. 
Zhong Yi said angrily, how many days has it been since the fall? His mother curled her lips. Two days. Li Qingqin said, her ankle is fractured, but everything else is all right. Wu Changhe also said, they've set her bones and placed a cast on it, but she has to recuperate for the next few months. Then he looked at his daughter and said, why didn't you be more careful when taking the stairs? Zhong Yi immediately said, which stairs did you fall down? His mother was amused. Why? Are you going to chip them? Zhong Yi clenched his teeth and said, I'll break them apart. Everyone laughed at that. Zhong Yi checked on his wife for a long time, showing concern for her injury at times and checking the x-ray film from the hospital at times. He suddenly remembered that he still had the spring water of health that he received from the lottery draw. If he let old Wu drink it, it should be able to heal her injury easily. But after considering and hesitating for a long time, Zhong Yi knew that he couldn't use it on her. He had used it on old RAO before to cure her of her internal injuries. But as internal injuries were not something that could be seen, and coupled with the fact that Ario I mean had also been recuperating for a long time before that, it didn't seem strange when she suddenly recovered from it. Meanwhile, old Wu's fracture was a different matter as she had only just broken her ankle two days ago. The hospital x-rays were right there, so how would it look if she could suddenly skip around or run a marathon when she was still walking with the aid of crutches a while ago? How could he explain something like that? Noon. They started eating. Everyone began discussing how to take care of Wu Zeqing during this period. Li Qingqin suggested, Chang He and I will bring Zeqing home with us. This place has two floors, so it will be very inconvenient for her to move around. It's better if she stays with us so that we can take care of her. Wu Zeqing smiled. There's no need for that. I can handle myself. Li Qingqin shook her head. You definitely can't take care of yourself alone. Zhong Yi's mother objected, leave it to little Yi's dad and me to take care of her. Haven't we been doing so for the past two days already? Wu Changhe said, the two of you are not young anymore. If you keep traveling to and fro every day, cooking and doing the chores, that's definitely not feasible. Why don't you just leave it to us? Both families argued over the matter for a long time. In the end, it was still Zhong Yi who made the decision. Zhong Yi put down his chopsticks. Stop arguing. She's my wife, so I'll be the one taking care of her, of course. His mother glanced at him. Son, it's not that mom doesn't believe in you. I trust that you are capable of caring for her in normal times when she is uninjured. But the problem is that it takes Zeqing a lot of effort to even go up and down the stairs, to say nothing of doing the laundry and cooking. Let you take care of her? With that culinary skill of yours? Even Pigsy would starve until the skin on his stomach became loose one. His father also said, Zeqing is carrying a child. Fast food is full of MSG, so she mustn't eat too much of it. She can't take a lot of medications either, so she will have to recuperate her injury by herself. You don't even know how to cook or make tonic soups for her to strengthen her body, so you should just forget about that idea of yours. At worst, your mother and I will come by daily to help out. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. There's no need for that. In any case, don't bother yourselves with this matter. Li Qingqin said, that won't do. You already have so much work to attend to every day, so where would you find time? But Zhong Yi said, I'll push away back. Starting today, for the next few months, I'll stay at home and take care of my wife. I won't be going anywhere, so that's that. Nobody say any more. Doing the laundry? I'll learn. Cleaning the house? I'll learn. Cooking? I'll learn. This is my wife. I won't have anyone taking care of her, but me. Chapter 1440, Zhong Yi turns house husband. The next day. Zhong Yi's studio made an announcement, effective immediately, due to family reasons, teacher Zhong Yi will be halting all business activities for a period of three months. We seek your kind understanding. Interviews? They were turned down. Projects? They were turned down. Advertisements? They were turned down. All activities were stopped. Zhong Yi had always worked in this way. If he wanted to do something, he would take it to the extreme. 
otherwise, he would not do it at all. This news created a buzz. The reporters were naturally well informed of what had happened. Zhang Yi halts all business activities. The latest update, Zhang Yi's wife suffers a leg fracture. Zhang Yi's wife injured in an accidental fall. Teacher Zhang to turn into a house husband? On Weibo. This came out of the blue? I hope it's nothing serious. I think it's not serious, just a regular fracture. I'm glad to hear that. Get well soon. Teacher Zhang, good one. You should be at home accompanying your wife at this time. Right, don't worry about your job, fighting, for now and just take good care of your wife. Right, you can work, fight, at any other time. The parentheses in the previous posts made me lol. Every time face smacking Jong takes a leave of absence from work, his popularity soars. Meanwhile, other people experience a drop in their popularity when they go on a break from work. To a celebrity, being in the limelight is the source of their life. But this increase in popularity is exactly what makes teacher Jong an oddity of the industry. So I really can't help but laugh whenever I see him say that he'll be taking a break from work. Back at home. His friends started ringing him. Although a fracture wasn't too serious, it wasn't trivial either. Zhang Xia asked in concern, is she all right? Zhang Yi laughed and said, it's not that bad. Zhang Xia said, speak up if you need any help. Zhang Yi said, sure, Grandma Zhang, I'm currently learning how to cook. Zhang Xia said, haha, that's great. You can make use of these few months for some spiritual cultivation to curb that fiery temper of yours. Zhang Yi smiled. Forget about my temper. What I need to get in order first is to make sure my wife gets taken care of. I've never realized how difficult it is since I've never done it before. When I went to the market to buy groceries this morning, I was at a complete loss. I don't even know what a jibble carp one looks like. In fact, I got it wrong even though I was buying the ingredients off of the shopping list. It was only then that I understood how difficult it was for my wife to do all of that. I've really not done enough as a husband. Zhang Xia laughed, then sighed, in the entire world, only your wife has the ability to subdue you. It was almost noon. Wu Ziqing was still busy working in the bedroom. Although she had applied to recuperate at home for the next few months, a lot of work at the SARFT still required her attention. She was a government official, after all, so she couldn't possibly just willfully drop everything like Zhang Yi and stop working when she wanted. She still had to handle a lot of work from home. Zhang Yi was making lunch downstairs. This is soy sauce. Then what is this? He had a taste. Oh, this is salt. He cooked the rice while checking recipes on his phone. Right at this time, a call came in. This time, it was from Yao Jintsai. Yao Jintsai asked, I just heard about your wife. How is she? Is she all right? Zhang Yi said, she's not too bad. It's just that she requires more effort to get around. Yao Jintsai said, did you drop all your work? Zhang Yi laughed and said, don't talk to me about work. Talk to me about cooking. Whoa. Yao Jintsai was amused. Are you for real, kid? Talk about cooking? Zhang Yi chuckled and said, by the way, is sister-in-law around you now? Hand the phone to her. I want to ask her how to make silver carp soup. There are too many different ways of cooking it that I found on the internet. A simple soup like that has more than a dozen different ways of preparing it. Everyone comes up with their own different styles, so I don't know whose recipe I should follow. I've had the silver carp soup that sister-in-law made and found to be really tasty. Yao Jintsai couldn't be more amused. Okay, okay, I'll get her to the phone. The person on the other end of the line changed. Hello, little Zhong. Hi, sister-in-law, I'd like to learn your recipe. He managed to stew the soup. Next, he wanted to prepare some pork trotters. Who knows how to cook pig's feet? Zhang Yi thought for a while before calling Spring Garden's Li Xiaoxian. Xiaoxian, how should pork trotters be prepared? What? Pork trotters? Didn't Sister Dong and Amy always used to say that the braised pork trotters that you made were good? Ah, uh, you're cooking? Yes. 
Foot, I'm recording for a TV show at the moment. What are you recording? Teach me first. Okay, 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 director, sorry, please excuse me for five minutes. After a busy hour. The dishes were done. The soup was finished stewing as well. John Yi shouted upstairs, Old Wu, it's time to eat. Then he went up to help his wife down. Slowly, watch your step. Wu Ziqing smiled. What did you cook? It smells so good. Zhong Yi said proudly, a delicious meal, of course. Wu Ziqing said, I'm really hungry. He wasn't very good at taking care of people. Just going down the stairs was taking them a very long time. The staircase was too narrow for him to support and help her down, but if he gave her a piggyback ride, he was afraid that he would accidentally touch her ankle. And with Zhong Yi's quick temper, he decided to lift old Wu by her waist. Then he took large strides down the staircase to the lower floor. Old Wu quickly said, I can walk on my own. Zhong Yi insisted, there's no need to. His mother opened the door with her key at this moment, just in time to see this frightening sight. She ran over as she shouted, stop right there. Ayo, stop right there. Zhong Yi let go of old Wu and said, there we go. His mother said in a speechless manner, who goes down the stairs the way you did? Zhong Yi said confidently, I'm strong, so I won't fall. What are you doing here? Did you follow the aroma? There's more than enough food, so why don't you join us? I wasn't sure that you could take care of Ziqing by yourself, so I came to have a look. If my daughter-in-law gets hurt in any way, you can be certain that I'll get you taken care of. His mother harumphed. She looked to the dining table. What is all of this? Zhong Yi smiled and said, silver carp soup, pork trotters, and stir-fried vegetables. His mother said, it doesn't look half bad, but I wonder how it tastes. Zhong Yi invited, have a taste, give it a try. Considering everything up to now, this should be the first time that Zhong Yi had seriously whipped up a meal other than making instant noodles. The three of them sat down and started eating. Wu Ziqing gracefully tasted the soup. Her beautiful eyes closed as she said gently, this is really quite nice. His mother had a taste too. She smacked her lips and said, it's not too bad, although it's nothing compared to the soup that I make. But based on your skill, it's exceeded my expectations by a lot. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes at her. You don't say. It's just because I haven't drawn the culinary skills experience book yet. If this bro had maxed out on that skill, I'd be whipping up the entire Manchu Han Imperial feast for you. Eating lunch. Washing the dishes. Cleaning up the kitchen. His mother might have spoken quite harshly of him, but she still doted on him. She said, all right, all right, just leave the dishes for me to do. I've never made you do the chores in all these years. But Zhong Yi stopped her. Don't move. I won't let anyone do my chores for me, hey, old Wu, sit down. Who said you can stand up? You want water? I'll get it for you, I'll get it for you, I'm done here. Is there any laundry to be done, eh, where's the detergent? Oh, found it. In the house, Zhong Yi was bouncing around to get all the chores done. Although the meal that he made wasn't that great, although he wasted a lot of water washing the dishes, Although he didn't handle the laundry too well, every task at hand was taken seriously by Zhong Yi, who put in his best effort as he performed them. When his mother saw this, she finally put her mind at ease. After his mother left, Wu Ziqing said, Little Yi, stop already. Zhong Yi came over to her with a smile. What's the matter? Old Wu reached out to wipe off the detergent foam on his wrist. Oh, you, work hard on your own work. I only had a fracture, that's all. Do you think that I can't take care of myself? I'm not as delicate as you think. Zhong Yi said, my work now is to make sure you're taken care of. You don't have to. Zhong Yi smiled and said, don't worry, I won't fall behind on my work. How's that? Didn't I tell you? Ha ha, this bro has already infiltrated the enemy's camp. It's just that no one knows about it yet. Comics are much more flexible to work with since I can draw them wherever I am. It's nice that I can finally work on them in the next few months. When the time comes to reveal the truth, I'll gain a huge amount of popularity within Asia. 
this is not hindering my work, so you just worry about recuperating from your injury. There's no need for any pretense between the two of us. Old Wu said, well, all right then. I guess I'll just have to enjoy being taken care of by my husband for the next few months. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.